gonna work. Hey everybody, this may or may not be working for you because we've had to move from one place to another. Those of you who are just general population are like, why is Kathy live now? What could be going on? Well, somehow things did not quite work out with my link. I don't know what I did. Um, I know it's going to take people a while to come over here. This should be live live. So let me check it out. But what this is my Kathy's Cooking Club potato class. And you know what? If you're seeing this and you're not in Kathy's Cooking Club, it's just a bonus because that's the best way to do it. So I'm going to bring my laptop over so I can check and make sure this really is un unlisted and public or public the way it should be. And if not, I will start another one. So a lot of people are waiting in the regularly scheduled thing as if things would work. Oh, I see a couple people, yay. All right, so you guys were able to get in. I'm just double checking. This, is, this has been a day, y'all. It's been a day. Okay, good. I have no idea what happened, but usually as I'm doing these things, I click on it and I see my link in Ecamm, the software I use to go live on. It's not there. There's no way to add it. That's why um, I'm feeling a little crazy. So now there's actually a live link. And I'm going to see if I can get that. And I will put that over in the other chat. You can go here to see the live class. And so, yay. Yay, everyone can see this. I believe, let me look in the edit video. So, in all the years that I've had to do this and had problems, I've never had this problem. So, where does it show me who gets to see all the things? So I was a little discombobulated anyhow. Isn't it nice when you're discombobulated? Here, I'm going to throw over, I made some new t-shirts, you guys, so I'm going to throw those under the video just because. Okay. All right, so it's potato meal plan. Hi, Janice. This was a perfect day to be late. Indeed, and hey, Carrie Powers. And hello to anybody who may not be in Kathy's Cooking Club who are like watching this now going, what the heck? My mistake is your benefit. <laughs> and I'm kind of just making, it's not that I'm exactly making up this class, so a lot of things that happen in Kathy's Cooking Club, and I'm just gonna cut some onions while we're chatting. I have a few things cooking that I'm gonna check on is I usually make up some recipes in class. And so you're going to see some of those. I'm going to chop this onion while I'm talking, um, both to soothe my soul <laughs> and try and get grounded from running around. Because literally, I was right here trying to click on the thing. And it was like, what are you trying to click on, lady? And I had just gotten into a good mood today. I don't know if you guys saw the live with Katya yesterday. I was feeling a little cranky this week. And then I went to Sprouts. I went to World Market and got a super cool Halloween glass and cheered myself all up. So I was not expecting technical difficulties. And Real says this is fun, yeah. <laughs> You're going to get to hear about the class, and real, um, please put in the comments, because I am flustered right now, if I need to explain something better for you in particular. That goes for everybody. Um, I do know that the more discombobulated I feel, the more likely I say do the thing to the thing. Not super helpful. So I was thinking this was going to be a short and to the point class, but this is probably going to be a long class because um, we did a rice meal plan prep class last month. 
And as I was doing the potato one, I kind of want to do like 50,000 potato ones. But what we're going to do tonight, for sure, we're going to make aloo gobi, which is just a cauliflower and potato dish. It's super easy. It's also pretty inexpensive. I'm going to use fresh cauliflower. You could totally use frozen cauliflower. I know cauliflower varies in price, kind of like gold does. <laughs> and sometimes it costs about as much as gold, which is not helpful to us. Okay, I feel a little bit better now. We are going to, I think we're gonna make mashed potatoes. We had, I talked about that a little bit earlier on my walk and people seem to be interested in that. I'm going to, I've got a couple things that have been cooking and I'm gonna be getting out my spices as I go today. Hello, D Lichenfield. D, right, it's D. And TS, yes, no, I know, this is a bonus. You guys got a bonus today. Why? Because you're nice. So, and I will be able to take anybody off who is naughty, but Linda, you are also a moderator. Okay, so I cook some baby potatoes, because to me, there's kind of the holy trinity of potatoing. You need baby potatoes, you need some baking potatoes, and you need some kind of waxy potatoes. And so, oh, you can't see these russets. Russets, yellow, and I got the russets at Sprouts, because have you guys noticed all the bags of potatoes, russet potatoes right now are tiny, like this size. So, um, so the yellow potatoes right now where I am actually are bigger. Okay, so let's, let's get fancy dancy, shall we? Let me move some of this stuff around. So I went ahead and started cooking these baby potatoes. And I, they're never all the same size. Have you noticed that? Um, oh, Joan is watching while on vacation from Mexico. You, my friend, are pretty amazing. And Jody, I know, bonus. Poor Jody wasn't able to get to fit some of the classes, so it works out well. So what you're gonna notice in here, some of these are cut. And yes, don't do this. Don't put your hand in hot potatoes. Um, and some of them are small, because they're always different sizes. So what we're gonna do, I want you to just cook these up. It, they change in size from being like teeny, teeny, tiny to, you know, pretty big. If they're not all a consistent size, go ahead and cut them up. We're gonna cool them. Um, and I've got a, a colander. And so I'm just gonna let them cool in here. This is a, I love this. You can get an OXO little silicone basket like this. It's just really nice for pulling things out of the steamer. So I just cooked it on high pressure for about I think I guesstimated seven or eight minutes on this one. And I'm gonna rinse this out because we're gonna start making our aloo gobi. I know, I, Joanne loves potatoes. Um, aloo gobi is one of Linda's favorite dishes. And yes, grew up with her mom's potato soup. She put hard boiled eggs in it while cooking. Oh, easy, you want an eggy taste? Kala namak also known as black salt, that is pink. I'll show it to you. And I should check these potatoes too. Um, see how pink it is? Focus. Here, we'll use the, we'll look over here. Oh, Cheryl put the lens different. Seriously, you focused on that and then you stopped. There we go. And when you smell it, it smells like sulfur like eggs. So as long as you're not SOS, Kalanamok, one of the things I've been doing for mayo, plain unsweetened yogurt with Kalanamok. Ta-da! Because it's already got some of that sour taste to it. But that would be really good. 
oh, Gina's going to go to Sh Chef AJ's conference. I think it's oh, I'm, like something your best self. Be your best self. Grasp your best self. Somebody put it in the comments and save me. Um, I can't wait to meet you. Please come up and say hi, because if you don't look exactly like your picture on YouTube, I'm going to have no idea. Um, but I want to say hi to you. Okay, so I've got some water. One thing you can do when you're cooking is you can put this in a different pot, let it cool, and give it to your plants. But I'm feeling super busy. <laughs> Right, because we're already, I'm already late, y'all. And so I'm gonna take these potatoes over here, and if they look like they were overcooked, I could um, put some cold water over them to stop the cooking. I'm just rinsing this out a little bit, and I am going to bring over some water, and we're gonna saute some onions. Everybody's favorite thing, right? So I'm just going to go to saute, press saute, and then start. If your Instant Pot doesn't have a start button, yay you, is all I have to say, because they, I find them slightly annoying sometimes. And then I want to make sure I get ginger in here. All right, so we're going to do about half an onion. Here's the thing about cooking. You wish there were more onions, put more onions in it. You wish there were less onions? Don't put any onions in it. This is, this is my aloo gobi. So I can do it however I want to. We're not looking to make the most ultimate, you know, best aloo gobi that has ever been made in the world. Now, while that's doing its thing, I'll take, I went ahead and I already broke up some cauliflower. These heads were quite large. And one of the things that I do for um, buying cauliflower is I like to go to Trader Joe's where I can get the biggest one. They do per piece, not per pound. And I can, you can sort of see back there the remnants of that cauliflower, but let me show you in here. So it's pretty hefty, pretty close to as big as my head. So if they're real tiny and they look puny, I don't buy them. So I think, I think these were like $3 each. So it felt like a really good price to me. But you can buy frozen if that's less expensive. And you just want the pieces to be kind of consistent. And actually, this is perfect because I missed a little piece. They often get some little bits of mold. Let's see, you're not gonna see there. Let's see if you can see here. Come on, come on. You can do it. All right, see right there? Almost saw it. Let's try again. Whoop. Seriously? Okay, let's try this other camera. <laughs> You can see right there the couple of dark spots. Since cauliflower is hard and not mushy, you can just cut them right off. Just cut that piece off. And there you go. So that's something that you can do. And since I'm not using oil, I may add a little bit of water. I tend to add more water in class because I'm gonna be distracted. And these onions could be chopped up in mince, they could be in big pieces, however you want it to be. And I'm gonna also grab some ginger out of the freezer and take them off. So I have a plastic bag in the freezer full of these. And you can skin it or not skin it, and I'm just going to grate some in. Another shortcut, minced garlic. I think this one is either from Aldi's or Lytle's, and Trader Joe's has one that's just garlic, water, and citric acid. 
And these are just shortcuts. Do you have to use shortcuts? Of course not. If you just got some really luscious garlic from your um, from your garden, totally use that. There is no, you have to, you should. This is your kitchen, you're cooking, enjoy yourself. And I do have a fan over there, so if you see some of the steam, put a little bit more in there. Because I'm gonna go grab some spices. Yeah, the tech issues were bad, Cheryl says, throw Kathy lots of love. The, you know. Um, yeah, and potatoes are super soothing. Ooh, you've been dipping them in cauliflower queso. I'm thinking we're going to try to make a new queso. My plan was, oh, I'm going to make a new queso live on class. So let's see what happens. So you guys, you're like, where am I? Why does it not say what we're doing? This is Kathy's Cooking Club. And if you aren't a member, you're getting a bonus because it's live right now. So eventually it won't be live. So make sure you come back and watch it. Um, great. We have not got to the ginger and the cauliflower yet, but I think probably we have definitely with the cauliflower, I did about half a head and that head was big. So it's probably three to four cups. And then I chopped up two really big yellow fin potatoes and these are quite large pieces. It doesn't matter how big or small you make your cauliflower and your potato as long as they're kind of the same because they're going to cook at the same time okay so the important thing is make everything small or make everything big and i'm holding up a piece of you know it's like half a really large cauliflower florette and then like one of these potato pieces do i stress and measure these like no and i think it's probably four cups of potatoes and actually, I'm writing the recipe down as I'm doing this. See, yeah, I got four cups of potatoes, four cups of cauliflower. Let's go ahead and do two teaspoons. No, let's do one teaspoon of garlic. And I'm adding that in there with the onions now. To let you see. Oh, it smells so good. So what we really want with these onions is we want them to get nice, clear, and translucent. Or if you're feeling or tasting them, they wouldn't have any bite. They're going to really get soft and kind of sweet. Yeah, and that's so true, Joanne. Trader Joe's does the same with squash, winter squash, potatoes, and eggplants as far as per the piece, not the pound. And it makes a big deal, like if you can get celery or celery root per piece, go for it. I tried to get one at Whole Foods a few years ago. It was going to be $9 for celery root that I was going to peel a bunch of stuff off of to use. So I just, so make sure you're being mindful. And sprouts goes back and forth as far as a store. And CJ gets frozen chopped garlic, and that is perfect. You can also get those little cubes of frozen ginger, and those work great, too. Um, I've just got an OXO grater that's kind of got a double side. I'm probably going to put in, to start with, about a tablespoon or so. You guys can kind of hear all that cooking stuff happening. So let's go ahead and I'll show you. This one, this, the reason I like this particular OXO grater is that when you go one way it grates, when you go the other way it grates. So it grates a little faster. And since this is just frozen, I can just go ahead and do it. If this was fresh ginger, I would go ahead and take the skin off. It's okay either way. While it's frozen, it's really easy to grate. So see here, there's some in there now. And I've said this disclaimer before when I'm publicly cooking um, foods I didn't grow up with, but this is not necessarily a perfectly traditional aloo gobi, but I, I really, really love Indian food. I'd say, let's do a tablespoon and a half. We can always grate in some more. Could have got a little more. Just 
just a little more water. It seems to be going away quicker today. I'm going to go ahead and get a few spices out. I'm going to get some cumin seed, coriander, well, let's just get cumin, coriander, turmeric, garam masala. Did I say there was anything else I wanted to put in here? It was, and actually we can go ahead and put some cumin seeds in if I can find them. Here we go. All right. So we'll just move this around a little bit. With the spices, we kind of want to toast them. Traditionally, those are sauteed in oil. Since we're doing oil-free cooking, I'm just going to put them in and let them dry saute. I'm going to do about a teaspoon of cumin seeds. And I'm going to, in fact, go ahead and cancel and turn off the heat because it's still warm enough to do everything I need it to do. Oh, this is smelling delicious. Okay, I'm going to put in about a half a teaspoon of garam masala. So garam masala is kind of, it changes from one blend to another. And actually, I'm going to put a tablespoon in. I just lied to you. I think I'm going to up some of these in ingredients that I was going to do. We're going to do a teaspoon of turmeric. We are going to do a teaspoon of ground coriander. You could use coriander seeds too. I have ground right now. Because cumin seeds, coriander seeds, you can just eat them as is. Okay. So I think I've gotten everything in here. And when I say you're going to toast the spices, just, they become more fragrant and I'm going to now kind of make it into a paste by adding some extra water. Also going to scrape some of that off the sides. Okay, let me get, um, I am looking for a spatula so I can just kind of dig that off in there because that's a lot of the flavor. Must be red and hot up here on this side. I just want to make sure all that yummy goodness is getting back into my pot because that's what's going to make my sauce really good. Now, you could even taste it now and decide if you want to put more of anything in there. Ooh, and Sherry said she just got a bunch of fresh turmeric and is not sure where to use it. So you would just grate it in. In something like this to saute would work great. Um, on plantbasedinstantpot.com, I have a golden milk recipe, or like a ginger turmeric tea recipe. I just put both my stirry things over there, like a crazy person. So see how it looks a lot like some of those things you may see in jars at the Indian market, things like that. Joanne, that's a great idea. Joanne says she buys pe and peel buys peeled fresh garlic, stored in olive oil in the fridge to keep it good, and just wipes off the oil. It lasts for months. That's a great tip. Love that. Let's see what else I. Okay. Let's see if I missed anything exciting. And Tia says, does the instant pot tend to keep flavor in the foods as opposed to slow cooker that makes it more bland? Both will, you need to add more spices for both. Both you should taste before you um, serve it. So the reason everyone says, slow cookers all taste the same. Everything I put in my slow cooker tastes the same. It's bland. Yeah, did you re-season it? No, no you did not. If you had a soup on the stove, you taste it and you decide, oh, that needs more marjoram or oh, that needs more garlic. But for somehow, we ignore these appliances that we're not standing over constantly. 
So typically, I will come back in, slow cooker or instant pot, put a little extra garlic powder so it doesn't get the edge. And I will, you could use ginger, um, ground ginger or fresh ginger and top that off as well, which is what we're probably gonna do. Now with an instant pot, we're gonna wanna put about a cup of water in there or a half a cup. There is some liquid in there now, but if we don't put enough, there's gonna be a burn notice. So I'm gonna put a half a cup of water in here. So I know mm, I kinda wanna put more in there. I'm gonna put another quarter. So that'll probably give me about a cup. You really can do it with half a cup with the old duos. Sometimes that's not the case. This is a pro and it can be a little fancy smancy. So I am then going to later, layer in my potato chunks. And I would layer in whatever I think is gonna take longer to cook in the bottom. And this goes with any kind of layered dishes or meals. It just is the way things need to be. Then I'm going to layer my cauliflower on top. And you know what, if I had just a little more cauliflower, I would have gone ahead and added it in. It's perfectly fine to do that. Okay, so we're gonna cook this, I think. So again, and real, there's about a half an onion, teaspoon of garlic, I never said, a, a one and a half tablespoons of ginger, and we could also add some diced tomatoes in there. I was going to, and then I just forgot till just now. So let's, let's just do it. Let's live that best life. Let's do these fire roasted tomatoes. The other one had basil in it. So when I use, this is a can, and now a can is 14.5 ounces. Used to be 15 ounces. So you just never know. <laughs> and don't let it really freak you out. Cans and jars and all that are getting smaller. And just do the best you can. Close enough counts. Hey Trish and Diana, awesome to see you guys. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna pop these in here and I'll mix it up really good when I open it up. Normally I would have put these in the bottom and I'm gonna get all that yummy juice out of there with a spatula. Everybody in Kathy's Cooking Club knows I love a spatula because you'll get less waste. It makes this easier to rinse out to put in my recycling. And to me, that's just a win-win all over the place. So I'm gonna cook this for about 10 minutes. You probably could cook it for a little less, but I like my aloo gobi when everything gets a little bit soft, I can mush some things together and just make it a little more sumptuous. So I'm gonna to go to pressure cook. I'm gonna pressure cook on high pressure for 10 minutes. Actually, I'm lying. Thinking of all those cut potatoes, I'm gonna do seven minutes. So we'll set this aside and let this get going. Oh, cans used to be a pound. And you know, cans, I often say from when it was 15 ounces that, and I'm gonna put this piece of, freeze, uh, this piece of ginger back in the freezer, because if it gets, it gets soggy kind of after you freeze it and leave it out. And so that's not super awesome. Okay. I need to check, I had started baking two potatoes. So all I did was wash these potatoes. I'm looking for something, there we go. Wash the russets that I bought and I poked some holes in it. I used my Breville air fryer function. I'll let you guys see these from above, okay. And 
these have been off for a little while so I can touch them. They're still warm. I can tell they're pretty soft. I like the way the skins get a little papery. And in fact, um, one of the things that's coming up, I've done this once. So in one of the classes I made like turkey with thin sliced white sweet potatoes and pastrami with sweet potatoes. I made beets, like pastrami. No, I made corned beets. And I'm thinking of hollowing out the potato and using like what would normally be the potato skins. You remember, are any of you old enough to remember like back in the 80s that potato skins filled with cheese and bacon was like a big thing? I don't think it is anymore, but it's kind of hollowed out like that. This makes a perfect bun. So we're gonna do some stuff with that coming up soon too. Um, oh, that's really funny. So someone's saying they're watching my video from my walk today. If you go into about one hour, 10 minutes, there's a tree in the background that looks like a face. I don't know, but uh, maybe that was the face of me now going back to tell myself, check your live before you go live. I didn't listen. Um, Diana, since I'm in the middle of teaching class, if you want to email me at kathyhester at gmail.com because you're wanting to join the cooking club, I think, then go for it. Just email me and I will take care of you later because I am discombobulated, which is why I'm live with all of you lovely people for a special edition of Kathy's Cooking Club, Potato Meal Plan Edition. And hello, MG. Is it... I, I totally want to make a name out of this. Uh, first, I want, I think your name is Meg. If, maybe I'm doing some sort of psychic, you know, commercial in my class. I don't know. Yeah, potato skins. <laughs> oh, awesome. It's awesome to see you here. This is a super special unplanned live. So anyhow, to bake your potatoes, you don't have to put foil on them. You don't really have to do anything that fancy. Clean them really good, like with a brush, to get all the dirt out. And poke holes in it with a fork. These I left in there for about 30 minutes, and we're going to crack it open and see if that was enough time. So let me get another cutting board. And I was thinking, I know this kind of goes along. I'm already making alu gobi, but I was thinking we should make some kind of stuffed potatoes and there are a couple we'll do okay so i know i'm not letting you see right now let me move some of this stuff out of the way okay and my russets have not been very fluffy so I'm assuming these are not going to be very fluffy too because I have a bad attitude today. It's not bad, but they're not super fluffy. So there's a couple of ways we can work with this. And I'm going to let these sit off to the side because I think we need to get something else in the Breville oven. So we'll cut these in half and we'll let them cool. And then I think I'm just going to make kind of like a samosa feeling because evidently that's what I want. So, <laughs> hi Elisa and Betsy. Oh, Sheila. Oh, Sheila, Sheila. If you are in Kathy's Cooking Club, these recipes will magically appear probably tomorrow or Saturday while I'm on the plane into Kathy's Cooking Club. Those of you watching live on my YouTube channel, I have no idea if which ones of these are going to go live or not. I was not supposed to be live here. But I tell you what, if you take good notes and you get me some of these recipes, there may be, I will and email them to kathyhester at gmail.com. I will email you back the official recipe packet. But you better remind me because I'm going to forget. All right. I know I'm asking for a lot for a live. I never asked this much from you guys. I'm going to show you one of my favorite things to do. And it's, it's ridiculously easy. 
and it makes me giddy. So you remember these little potatoes that we cooked? Let me get these over here. All right, I'm gonna take a piece of wax paper. You could do a piece of parchment paper. You could be a grown up and just not use any, but it's faster. Oh, it's not, Linda, it's not on Podia anymore. So if you guys go to podia.com, I have nothing there anymore. It's, it's Kathy Hester Drive Cart, but there's a special link only that gets you to where you can buy classes now. It's a pain and it's, but Thrive Cart was better. So we live with that. Okay, this is not hot. Get a couple of these. So I am going to, I guess first I should do this. These are from my air fryer. These could be trays in your oven, like just regular trays. And I'm gonna grab a piece of parchment paper that's already cut. I do not care that it's a little wrinkly. Oh, Joan says this is getting me motivated to do Mary's Mini. Excellent. Yeah, potatoes are just everything to everybody, except for the, the people who can't have any kind of potatoes. And then, is it not still just kind of everything? Um, and so Carlene says the same thing. I used to get 15 pounds of russets from Costco, but the quality's gone downhill. And I feel you, I just, so like these Yukon Golds, I think these are Yukon Golds. Does it even say, it just says yellow potatoes. These are waxy, but I've been finding the russets fairly waxy. And when I am um, making mashed potatoes, they're just not as fluffy. So. Okay, so we got this set. Let's see if that helps. All right. Yeah, this totally doesn't help at all. <laughs> Are you guys the same way as me? One thing goes wrong and then you're like, woo! All right. So crunchy is the one thing that's very hard to do on whole food plant-based vegan. So some of these, we talked earlier, some of these I cut in half. There are a couple that I even cut in quarters. There's some that are whole because they're not the same size. <laughs> right, they're not even the same size necessarily once I've done this. So what I do is I take a piece of paper. This is wax paper so it's gonna stick less and I smash it fairly thin. And the wax paper usually lets it slide off more. These are still a little warmer. So I'm gonna get a spatula to help this. Okay. And this is gonna get nice and crunchy as it's being cooked in the air fryer or your oven. We can put that over here. Cheryl is going to do something with her phone. And she doesn't usually do a whole lot during class. She was helping me with all the issues today. Oh, somebody else stopped um, buying russets from Costco. Oh, CJ, I'm so sorry you can't eat potatoes. I didn't know that. Um, most of the things that we're doing you could do with cauliflower as well, if you're able to eat cauliflower, but I thought these would just be really pretty. You can make these as thin or as thick as you want. So again, and real, if you're watching, so what I've done is I've cooked some baby potatoes. Some are cut in half quarters and some were small enough to be as is. Okay. And it does help to use, and this is a very thin spatula. So I'm putting it on a piece of wax paper. If I'm super smart, what I'm doing is I'm putting it cut side down, and then I'm smushing it. I'm putting another piece of wax paper on top. I'm smushing it till it's, it's not flat as a pancake, but it's pretty darn flat. 
And what will happen, I'm going to eat this piece because y'all don't want to go there. And we won't make all of these because I won't make you do this, but we'll probably make two pans. And in fact, I made some of these when we first started on the starch solution and, and half cooked them. I didn't cook them to the point where there was no coming back from that amount of crispy. And I put them in my freezer. And, I, and they're there so I can pull them out without doing all of this work if it's been a really bad day and I need something crispy. So in other words, if I wasn't talking to you right now, I'd be pulling them out and having my best potato day. <laughs> oh, Diana, thank you. You're so sweet. And, you know, potatoes, if you can't have potatoes, I understand. Um, I don't know if cauliflower would do so well with this in particular, but it could. It could be okay. And what I love, I've got the tricolor potatoes, so we've got the yellow, the red, and the purple. Of course, the purple are my favorites because purple. I have purple hair. If I, I, if I could have everything purple, I would be good. I'm like a, sm a tween <laughs> when it comes to purple. Somebody at the hairdresser was like, well, if you use that overtone, which is how I make my hair purple, it dyes your, it stains your hair. And I'm like, and you're not going to like it when you're ready to change colors. And I'm like, I'm never changing colors. I went from natural color to purple. And I feel, figure I'm staying purple for, you know, I was regular colored hair for 50 some years. Now it can be 50 some years of purple hair. And I like it. It's vegan. It's a conditioner. And so I don't even really have to pay that much attention to it. But do any of you guys already make these little smashed potatoes? Now there are a couple of ways you can do it. You can leave them plain, like we're probably going to do, unless I just change my mind right now. So it takes a few minutes to get all these done. I'm going to put these in the air fryer. Whenever I'm using an air fryer, so I'm using the Breville Oven Air. It takes longer to cook than if you just have one of those smaller egg-shaped ones. So just know that. So if I say I'm going to do something for five to ten minutes there, you might want to check after three minutes and just see what's going on. Oh, purple is their favorite color. Yeah, you could use tofu, but I don't know that you want to just smash the tofu. So um, there's so many wonderful things you can do. Yeah, you can do potatoes in the panini press we've done. We've done the waffle iron. So I could take some really nice spices and put some spices over it. I have some ranch, dry ranch spice from our class a couple of times ago. And we could have ranch potatoes, right? Or I was thinking we would make a new and exciting queso, because I haven't made a new queso in a couple of years. And I was thinking we would make a pumpkin queso. Ooh, I have potato on me. Whoops. Um, so we'll get this and I'll do another, let's do another um, one of these too. Another sheet of them. And then we'll switch them up. We've and then we'll start on our next thing. Grab another piece of cut parchment paper. And in Kathy's Cooking Club, I showed you, I got, I have this thing under the kitchen sink where I can put just a roll of parchment in and it's got a little place to cut it. It's awesome. So this is the last pre-cut paper you're gonna see. Um, oh, makes smashed potatoes all the time. I smash them with a fork and get ridges that are really cr crispy. EBTB seasoning. EBTB. I don't know what that is, so tell me what that is. Yeah, and Rachel says, I haven't done the smashed potatoes yet. And this is the way I found it to be a little faster because they really want to stick on your hands a lot. Let's do these, these purple guys. And I'm the person that you're waiting behind at Trader Joe's or Aldi's that's looking for the perfectly balanced color of the little baby tricolor potatoes. So let me just apologize to all of you now. 
Um, let's do a big red one. You can also use these like chips. We've, I've served them like as a crunchy thing with a soup when we were first doing the McDougal 12 day. But it's just, I mean, it's potatoes. If you, as long as you can have potatoes, you're good with these. Now, those of you who are really concerned about calorie density, which we don't talk much about in Kathy's Cooking Club, Dr. Lyle has said that things like air frying or drying something out does increase the calorie density slightly. Not enough for us to worry though. So just remember that. And I know Dr. McDougall would like us not to worry. He just wants us to eat healthy. So when I was worried about not being able to take my blood pressure well, he was like, then how about you live your best life and don't take your blood pressure? I was like, okay, I can do that. Oh, yeah, everything but the bagel spice. I got it. I wasn't, I've never seen the abbreviation, I don't think. And that would be really great to put on this, too. I know Chef AJ takes the smaller yellow fins, cooks them, puts them in the fridge overnight, and then smashes them a little bit and makes bagels out of them with everything everything but the bagel spice. But you could, I have a barbecue seasoning that's awesome, and if you guys don't have that, all you have to do is sign up to unhealthyslowcooking.com or plantbasedinstantpot.com on the mailing list, and you'll get four of my favorite spice blend recipes. You guys in the cooking club have way more than four, <laughs> You're like, four? That's for nobody. Ah, and Colleen says, does the overtone, meaning the purple hair, come off on your pillowcase or clothing? Yes. It do, it's never come off on my clothing, but it is on my pillowcase. So I, even when we travel, like I'm going to go see Chef AJ this weekend, I am going to bring a pillowcase. Usually I bring a, especially if we stay in an Airbnb or at a friend's house, we bring a pillowcase for me. But we have an off-white couch and it's never come off on the couch. My I was wondering, is that ranch in ads as it, oh yeah, I have vegan different than my day's tofu, okay. I don't understand any of that organic silver moon dance designs, I'm so sorry. I was wondering, I have a dry ranch that, I think I used a soy milk powder and ranch dressing spices. So I could use it as a sprinkle. We made ranch air fried chickpeas and that was a lot of fun. These are like nice, big, glorious ones. Let's do another purple one. But usually when I'm doing a meal plan for the week, I cook us up a big batch of these anyhow, and I just leave them cooked up in the fridge so that I can make these. Sometimes we will just, if I'm hungry and I didn't really have time to prep for lunch, I'll dip it into uh, a dressing I have. I'll warm them up. I'll smash them or not smash them. I've sliced them and served them with queso. So I've done a lot of different things with them. Oh, carrots grated and smashed with almond flour. You know, you probably could, but I don't know. Like, could you make a mixture that can smash, that sort of together and do this? Yes, but I hesitate to say, do it without trying it. I tr you know, I, I will try things right here, right now, but let's see how this is going. So I'm gonna put these in the air fryer. See, these are these nice big pieces. Oh, a dry ranch commercial on TV. It is not vegan. And how I make my ranch dressing, and I am trying to put it on to, let's do, I'm gonna do eight minutes. I always try to take the time down from a few minutes. That's the Instant Pot saying, hello, we're done, pay attention to me. 
you can wait your turn so when you're air frying always the first batch the new first time you use it underdo it so if you in your old air fryer you always air fried it for 10 minutes try five you can always add more time you cannot take the time away okay so let's see if i missed anything else do, 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 do. yeah and you can smash those potatoes in the waffle iron um caroline says she peels hers first yeah and i just purple is just such a beautiful color it has lots of good antioxidants and yummy things like that too so i see more people are here welcome you are getting a bonus kathy's cooking class right now because that's what we're doing because something messed up and it's your benefit okay so i want to show you this this is the one reason that i really like the pro model of the instant pot is if i do this it doesn't just splatter everywhere it has this little guard so during classes oh that smells so good i can just open it and not have to worry about it if you have a duo you have that little little hook and you go so at that point I don't just flip it and let it go because then eventually water droplets are going to go everywhere and it's going to hurt. Someone could get hurt and I don't want it to be you. don't want it to be me either. So why would you get a new Instant Pot? Yours isn't working. You don't need any of the buttons. The air fryer is at 400 degrees, Betsy. Thank you for asking that. If I was in... So in the Breville of an air, I tend to have my temperature up a little bit higher. If I was in the Phillips, where you pull out the basket, I'd probably would be about 380. We're splitting the hairs and literally could be at 400 and cook it for less or 300 and cook it for more. So there's no one right way. Yeah, hi Terry. It is a nice feature on this one. I think it's the Pro and this was you guys heard me kvetch a little bit about all the models just have, like let's have an appliance and let's do seven models a year i'm feeling this way about that so this is the duo evo plus which was a model for less than six months it was the precursor to the pro the pro has all the same features why well, have two that's a lot of marketing <laughs> Okay, and just remember, if you're running and catching the replay, the replay may not stay. I've got to this. I've got to think about this, but I might let it stay. Who knows? Um, but if not, it will be in Kathy's Cooking Club. But I'll see. Also, if you email me and you're not in Kathy's Cooking Club, and you're like, "But I'm senior, or I have a health issue, and I don't have any money." Say, hey, Kathy, are there any scholarships? And tell me how much you can afford. Between a dollar and forty dollars. Okay? Because I'd rather have you here hanging out with me than not. And there's always going to be free lives and stuff like that, too. So this is not, this is just one time where the two worlds merged. And really, I will think of it as an opportunity. One time I did a class live by mistake because I was like, this many people didn't buy the class. This time it's like just living our best life. Okay. So are you are you ready to stop? Okay. Sometimes the little red thing will stay up. You can if it wasn't, this didn't make it go down. It was just stuck. If it had been having a lot of pressure, it wouldn't have moved it. And Carrie says she uses a stovetop pressure cooker and hasn't been able to justify getting an Instant Pot. You don't have to. Yeah, I don't have a stovetop pressure cooker. So, you know what? You should get whatever you want to get. And that is so the Breville preheats. Okay, and this isn't going to look beautiful because we didn't mix all the things in. 
We've got our tomatoes popped up on top of the cauliflower, which is already getting a little turmeric glow. And because I erred in the side of caution as far as liquid, this may have too much liquid. And we're gonna see as we, there's a couple things we can do. Oh, that smells so good. And see how, how the cauliflower's breaking up. I can also smush a couple potatoes and mix that in and that's, that's good enough. Then I don't need to keep cooking this. And this is, I love a nice curry like this. If you wish that the cauliflower stayed together in larger florets and things like that, um, then that's fine. You can um, cook it a little bit less. We cooked it seven minutes. Maybe you could cook it five minutes. But I like, I do this with soups and stews too, as far as smashing the potatoes a little bit, letting it get in there. All right, so the moment of truth, I'm gonna taste it, and I'm just getting a little bit on here. I feel like it's still pretty mild. So I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna add this into the recipe so we do it differently for you guys. This is what it means to develop a recipe. I'm gonna use a whole other teaspoon of garam masala. And a garam masala, don't get McCormick because it's mostly cumin. And every Indian person I know says, they go, use, they're like, and this takes garam masala, don't use McCormick. So I'm giving you, I'm passing that along. I'm also gonna go ahead, I may double, everything a little bit. I'm going to do another teaspoon of coriander. Yeah, I'm just going to live my best life. Let's do another, we don't think we need more turmeric. Let's do, I'm going to do also like half a teaspoon of cumin to make it one and a half. I'm using ground cumin, so I did one tablespoon cumin seed plus one half teaspoon ground cumin. You wouldn't want to just throw in cumin seeds right now because um, they're just going to be crunchy and they're not going to activate. It's not going to be nummy. Okay. Right. And I'm also going to add more gar uh, ginger like I thought I would. I could add some more garlic powder now if I wanted to. And if you use salt, which I do, I always say do salt to taste. And some people think that that is really bad, but I think you know yourself. So if you're like, I've never cooked with salt, start with a quarter or an eighth of a teaspoon. You could also just salt at the table, which is what Dr. McDougall recommends. So it's fine to eat salt and sugar to make your food palatable in his program. But so if, if you've ever watched a cooking show on like Food Network, they salt like 17 times. And I just pulled this back out of the freezer and this is gonna melt right in. So I'm probably gonna do another teaspoon to two teaspoons of ginger. And you could grate this up and have it frozen, whatever. You know, but I just, you can literally take it from the store and put it in your freezer just like that. So, how many things do we get to take the lazy way in our house, in, in our lives? Oh. And if you didn't have fresh ginger, you could use ginger powder. Right? Same thing, don't have fresh garlic, use garlic powder. Now let me get another taster spoon. Let's see if this. Yes. Okay. What's the difference between mm, and yes? When you taste it, you're like, ooh. That's the only difference. Before I was like, I taste a lot of potato. This I don't want to. I do have a slow cooker aloe gobi recipe on healthy slow cooking that I made particularly 
around a holiday for when you have your friends over who've never had Indian food. So it's super mild. You could also put some um, green chilies or some red chili powder, but I live with Cheryl, so I don't get to do that. Right? Okay, let's see. Aw, thanks, Brenda. I appreciate it. Brenda's talking about Kathy's Cooking Club. Right now, so when you when you join Kathy's Cooking Club, it's the regular price is $50 a month. You get two live classes that are usually two to three hours long and access to all the other classes I've ever done. And it's over 100. I think it's like 110 now. So it's it's a pretty great deal. And those all have recipes that go along with them. You access it through a program called Thrivecart, blah, blah, blah. Um, again, you have questions about it, email me, kathyhester at gmail.com. And if I don't have a nervous breakdown today, I will read your email tonight. And Terry said my deceased aunt had a recipe of hers that said to use a large spoon of curry. Yes. And so we think about everything being so precise and so perfect. So like to someone, like, I probably could have made my cauliflower bigger. There's not big pieces of cauliflower in this. Cheryl's going to like it because of that. If you looked in there and you're like, mm, I don't like that cauliflower, make, make bigger pieces. You can always cook it a little bit longer. So make it the way it's going to work best for you. Um, let's see what else I missed. All right, so what I would do if you if you want to make aloo gobi in the slow cooker, go look and maybe like triple the amount of spices that are in there. It's very mild. It's baby, baby mild, like even as far as like garam masala goes. And Kitty Mama is saying what I always say in all the classes, an Indian market is a beautiful place to have access to. Spices are fresher, cheaper. And it's just wonderful. I, while I have everything I put into these bottles, I have bins in my pantry. And also, if you guys are wondering who aren't new, I don't know if you can see the smoke. It's not smoke. It's actually the liquid from those evaporating. And I, I did not give you all that disclaimer. The cooking club people know. Oh. It almost felt like fall today, so I'm going to take that. And I did kind of like finally go, <sighs> I went to all the stores after my walk. And then I was just kind of like, oh, this is nice. This is lovely. Okay. Yeah, you can freeze ginger. Absolutely. Oh, Kathy Mack is going to be in Sacramento on Sunday. If you guys are going to Chef AJ's thing, please say hello to me. Because I also, I just put up on the Facebook group, and I'm going to put it on Heartbeat later today, that um, that we're doing a lunch on Monday at this Himalayan place. There's an event on Facebook, so I would love to see you guys there. I'm going to grab another pot for this, and then I'm going to check on those. So... So I would love it because, yeah, I'm just in Sacramento for a couple of days, but I'd love to see all the peoples, all of you guys. And Hera, who did the 12-day McDougal program with me, lives there and set up this event. She was very funny. She's like, bring cookbooks. I'm like, I don't have any cookbooks. But you know what I was thinking? And maybe this will be, maybe it's all karma working out in my benefit, is that I was thinking maybe... I can offer people to sign up for a special Kathy's Cooking Club. Okay. Am I really? Yeah, I'm going to peel the potatoes. You ready to peel some potatoes? <laughs> we're going to peel some potatoes and we're going to make mashed potatoes. And I'm going to make a gravy. I'm also going to figure out here. Ha! Ha, I say. I need to make sure I wash the potatoes after I peel them. I am going to use these yellowfin potatoes. Because we were talking about mashed potatoes. Ooh, that 
potato doesn't look good. Just gonna get about four potatoes, hopefully. How many more potatoes are in here? How many of these are naughty potatoes? This one just has a really big icky spot. It's, it's not really the end of the world or anything. But I'm gonna have to cut a lot of that off. And someone else had mentioned about potatoes, about the little eyes on the potatoes and things, and that's a great question. And you're like, you don't have any eyes on your potatoes, Kathy. That's because I bought them today. And allow me to show you some potatoes that have been waiting. Those some eyes. <laughs> and oftentimes what I'll do, and I do this with sweet potatoes too, doesn't want to do the thing. Okay, there you go. See, those are some big eyes. I cut this section off. I peel it to make sure there's no grain. And I plant this, and it makes a potato vine. And I put it in with my herbs. Oh, I love black cumin, Diana. I love it. I use, it's a nice darker flavor. So anyhow, Cheryl's always like, why don't you throw those away? And I'm like, oh, they'll work fine once I peel them down. And then there are these guys that probably are ready just to go into the ground. They, because they're so tiny, it's hard to get them off, but these aren't actually that bad. I do keep them in a drawer. So what you'll find is even at Costco, if those potatoes have been out for a while, even under the lights, they'll start getting a little bit green skinned. They'll get a little bit, um, they'll get a little bit bumpy. Like you saw how the red were bumpy, but if you peel the first little peel that comes off, it'll look a little bit greenish. So. Yeah, they don't seem like they're, um, would be, oh, you know, there's, there's so many Facebook, the Facebook pages, there's one Facebook group, I think it's Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester, and I did post it there, um, if you're in Sacramento, just email me and I'll email you the link too, um, but if you go there, yeah, exactly, this is also one of the things with the pros is it has these double handles. I have two of these, so I have two pots. It also means if you're switching from a duo to this, your old pots aren't gonna fit. But it is kind of nice. You can also, it is sanctioned to use that on the stove as well. I'm trying to think, I need another, here, we'll just use this. So I can then rinse the potatoes. So now's a great time to ask me questions while I'm peeling potatoes. <laughs> Usually I have all of this prep done ahead of time, but today was not that day. I know there's supposed to be some sort of touchy-feely moon thing going on, and I wish Erin Hawker was here now so she could tell me. So see, when I cut that piece off the potato, there's a little bit still there. So I'm going to cut that off too. Oh, and there's another piece there. So any parts that are bad, just take them off. So see how all that's fine. Okay. You'll get this exciting overhead view of peeling potatoes, but I'm just, a couple of them have, like there's a bad spot. So I'm just, instead of even bothering with it, and there it goes. Goodbye, bad spot. And what I usually do is I peel them whole, I rinse them, I'll rinse this knife, and then I'll cut them up. That's usually how I do it. If you like to do it a different way, I support you in that. And so Diana was talking about black cumin. And black cumin is just delicious. I have some Afghani black cumin as well. I've got some whole and some ground. And if you have some, smell it and smell it against your regular cumin. It has the general scent and taste, but it just seems a little darker, a little richer. Black cardamom versus cardamom. Black cardamom is actually, let's see if I see a little, 
there's a little tiny piece there I just get them off goodbye and all this can go into the compost and if I have a lot of eyes like when I use those red potatoes I literally cut a piece off with the eye and I do this every spring we've got sweet potato vines and potato vines in with a lot of our plants on the on the deck and it just makes this free trailing sweet potato vine and you can literally buy sweet potato vine or you can let nature give you some for free <laughs> Right? Okay, there's more, um, more comments, more excitement. And Gina was saying, I was telling someone that all the produce from Whole Foods, Costco, and Trader Joe's isn't as nice lately. And it does, it's kind of disappointing because I really love potatoes and I'm doing the starch solution, right? And so I was, but it also can be, you know, what time of the year it is. So I noticed the russets are smaller, like sometimes this small. And so I don't necessarily want a big bag of those because that's a lot to eat if that's your main portion or more than 50% of your plate. Um, and I'd rather just have a bunch of big baked potatoes. And if you go to the farmer's market, they're mostly new potatoes. They could still be this big, but they're still pretty new. Um, oh, thanks for putting up the Allo Gobi slow cooker recipe, Linda. I really appreciate that a lot. Oh, and Lydia says, I've never joined Facebook, but I want to join just for yours. That's why I started the Heartbeat group. The Heartbeat group is free. It's not on Facebook. It's, um, you do get announcements unless you change your settings, and I wrote about that because people go, I unsubscribe from your list, and I'm like, this is not a list. So I put up things like my lives, and I did start um, a specific whole food plant-based no oil thread in there so that people can talk and ask questions. And it's just a matter of what people decide they like the most, really. And so there's so many ways to access my information. And sometimes I, I try to put it on all of them, but sometimes I'll do more on one than another because it's just me. It's kind of funny when someone emails me and says, I blah, 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 and they yell. They're like, somebody took my money and I don't have this. It's like, no, I didn't take your money, I promise, and let's work on this problem. And they're like, oh, it's you. It's like, of course it is. It's me or Cheryl. <laughs> So if you're getting an email or a response, 99% of the time it's me or Cheryl. And we are here to help. See, there's a little piece of potato, so I'm just going to peel that right on out. Ta-da! So don't stress. I know a lot of people really stress about little places on their potatoes and sprouts. And if you got one that was like completely green all the way in the middle, super soft, or was just covered in so many sprouts you can't cut it up just let it go that's what I tell myself let it go it is very hard for me because I don't like to leave any potatoes behind and you probably don't either so um, yeah the cat the cooking club isn't that much different than what you see only you get a lot of recipes <laughs> and you get you get them written up afterwards as I promise Whereas sometimes if I'm doing a live, I get, my priorities get jiggled around a lot. So how do you guys make mashed potatoes? Do you have a special thing that you put in it? Like I, I do a couple things and when we were talking today, last time I made them, I made cheater roasted garlic mashed potatoes. And what does that mean? That means that I didn't use real roasted garlic. I used roasted garlic powder. I also have some roasted garlic in the freezer that I made myself. And I could put that in. I could either puree some fresh herbs 
or even just snip them with scissors and put them in here. Um, I could do so many different things. Cheryl is coming home right now. You know, oh, and Lydia, the organic silver moon, that's you as well, is asking, do I use the potato skins to make great chips in the air fryer? A lot of times I don't, but you certainly could. I did in one Kathy's cooking club, we tossed it in some liquid smoke and maple syrup and made potato skin bacon with it. And that was super fun. Do you need a sous chef? <laughs> Cheryl's, Cheryl's like, do you need a sous chef now? Did you get your phone taken care of? I have to go back and get it set. Okay. Cheryl is the one who keeps us up in the iPhones, which helps, which is what you see when I go walking or when we're out and about. Is that's, that's the camera we use right now. And we have for a long time. Um, so she's in charge of upgrading and keeping up to all the latest info. And evidently, it's about time for that again. So she had to get her screen fixed so that she can upgrade her phone. And if you want to know more than that, email her at CherylPurser at gmail.com because that's all I got for you. <laughs> and holistic healing. Oh, hey, Hera. I was just talking about that. Hera, if you would not mind and if it's easy for you, would you put the um, Facebook event to our Monday lunch in the chat? This is actually Kathy's Cooking Club, for those of you who didn't already know. And because of many mishaps, it's free to the public today. <laughs> At least today only. I don't know if it's going to stay that way. Okay. So I'm just going to take these guys and I'm going to rinse them. Then we're going to come back over here and cut them. Okay. Mm -mm. <laughs> A little bit, but actually, give me another cutting board, please. That way I can put this on where water wouldn't go over there. That's perfect. Awesome. All right. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, I want to rinse this too because I cut through that. Let me rinse this real quick. All right. And so with this potato thing, I just want to cut them. Up, oh, see, there's a little piece that I feel like shouldn't be there. Just cut away. Ta. Here we go. And you just cut them up into as close of equal pieces as you are able. Whatever that means for you. Sometimes potatoes are giant. Sometimes all the potatoes are all different sizes. And it's hard. Just make it as easy as possible. Ah, uh, and, and Harris said, discovered um, the chips with potato peels by accident. Yeah, and that would be really good to, um, to just put some seasoning, like a barbecue seasoning, pepperoni seasoning, bacon seasoning, anything like that. And if you're in a big hurry, which we are not, you could cut these potatoes up smaller. I'm just doing kind of medium chunks because basically I don't want you to have to watch me cut up all the potatoes. And with potatoes in class, and I'm here, I'm going to prepare this so I can throw these in. So I'm going to put, you know, about a cup or two of water in there. It doesn't have to cover, it just has to be enough to steam. And I can put these big things in here. Ooh, Rebecca, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Because that sounds delicious. Okay. I'm just going to cut up these last three potatoes really quick. And just like I talk about everything else, cooking isn't about perfection. Sometimes it feels like it's about perfection. And see there, see that little brown spot? Goodbye. 
And these were potatoes I got today. So sometimes potatoes, I feel like I left those a little, this one a little bit big. Okay, and I'm gonna cook them for about eight minutes. And that's what we're gonna take in some information about um, making these mashed into mashed potatoes. So I put about a, that's probably six to eight cups of potatoes. But really you could do this with a potato, 10 potatoes, 15 potatoes, one potato. Okay. Actually, let's just do seven. Let's see how that looks on there. All right, back to some comments. Um, Rebecca says, was on your, our, our earlier live when we actually talked about mashed potatoes, made some boiled and mashed, nooch, garlic powder, dried chives, red miso paste, pepper, and soy yogurt. And I have some yogurt in there so we can do that for sure. Um, yep, and you can make um, potato flour. You can dehydrate your potato peels and make potato flour with them too. So that works great. And they want you to say hello, Cheryl. Hi. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Hera says there's only 30 spots available for lunch on Monday in Sacramento and they're going fast. Um, I would love it. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you love my shirt. I, I always wear happy witchy shirts. Um, so I would love it if, if any of you guys live near Sacramento, please come join us. I'm looking for where my my wifey thing is. All right. So let's take a look at our air fryer potatoes. Our smushy, crunchy goodness, and see if it's good enough. We need to do more or what? I think they're going to be about right from what I see. And this is how I like them. And your mileage may vary a little bit. You see how, also it's nice to cook them whatever skin side down if you can. Let's see, it's this one. Because they will stick a little bit. The skin helps them not stick. Parchment paper helps too. These are still moist enough that they're not going to crunch like a potato chip. So they're perfect for later. But like right here, this one, it's going to crunch. I tried to crunch it in the microphone. I don't know if you heard it. And these are just plain. So for me, these are texture. I would usually take these, and let's look at the other pan, and we may put them back in for a little bit more and make our cheese sauce. And see, these could be cooked some more. You can turn them over. These have been in there for a while, so they're not very hot. If you're taking this out of your oven, please don't touch it with your hands. Don't do the silly things that I do. But also, I have a lot of calluses here, too. So now, if we flip them, they'll cook a little more evenly. And if I were going to, to just prep, if I was prepping for another day, this maybe what we're going to eat i'm not sure which is why i'm putting them back here if this was for another day this is as crispy as i want them because when i put them back in to reheat it's going to take time to reheat and then they are going to get crispier and lose more moisture and we don't want them to be just burnt burnt icky discs right we want it to be fun and exciting um and i still just lost my wipey thing because I put it here. Anybody else just get completely discombobulated when one thing changes? Or is it just me? Is it just me? Human nature. Cheryl says it's human nature. Um, oh, used to live in Carmel. I would love, we would love to see anybody. Um, Chef AJ is doing a conference on Sunday in Sacramento that I'm going to be at 
and Hera was nice enough to organize a lunch. And it's going to be a whole food plant-based no oil lunch, and I am super, super excited. Um, I didn't think you could use parchment paper in the Breville. I don't know who told you that, but I use it all the time. I don't know if someone else has had a bad experience with it. You, but like this was all in there. It was at 400 degrees. You don't want it like right across the top. Well, you don't want it to be actually on an element, but like, okay, so this one was at the top. This was sticking up. Well, let me just show you. There's not even, I mean, you can see where this part's slightly darker than that part. Here, let me get a good one so you can see, so you don't feel like I'm hiding anything from you. The edges get a little darker, see? You can see where the potatoes were, where this was. Nothing's like burnt. So maybe somebody else says that, but I do not find that to be true for myself. I use it all the time. Now, where you have to be careful is not in the breville, but if you're using it in an egg will you get the phillips out for me real quick just so it's right over there and i'll show you that yeah um what can happen is things can break loose and get sucked up into the top part which is an electric heating element and catch on fire this one it because it's bigger it's just not that kind of inertia I'm trying to also get a pan out. For our samosa filling. This is not big enough. I'm queen of getting, this was probably too big, but I say let's do it. Let's have a big pan. The Breville. And our, no, the Phillips. I love the Phillips, but see how this has a pull out basket? And this particular one actually has a top because let's see if this is going to work. Can you get closer? Okay, there we go. See how that's like an old fashioned electric element? That's what's on the top of these air fryers. Also, there's a, it's like blowing air everywhere. So, it blows it up into that so if I put a piece of parchment in here and it blew up from what it was under, it could come up here and catch in fire. Now, there's um, a broiler and things like that in here, but it's just not quite the same, the same chance of it, if that makes sense. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and just be careful. If you notice that stuff is coming up, like I would never use parchment paper under kale chips. Anything that's going to be so light, it could be airy fairy dancing around. You want to put parchment paper on something that's heavy to keep it from sticking. To me, that's how I feel. I feel strongly about that even. Ooh. I'm probably not going to make a dip right now, but well, I'm going to make I'm going to make a queso dip, but we'll we'll see. We'll see how many things we get to do because I got to get these done, too. But yes, yeah, so I was thinking you can make. Oh, you like my sneakers? They're new. They're ultras. Thank you. They were I thought there was only one color and then I hated it. And they're like, you don't like that color? And they brought me a, a happier color. And Penny said she had a go eyes like that. Oh, hey, Angela, it's awesome to see you. Yeah, these are the ultra Cheryl Tur I'm like, shoe model and a cook. They have a wide front foot and they're a zero drop, so they're really good for your posture. And they've really helped my joints a lot. And Penny had a go wise, but gave it away to use the Breville. The Breville's great. However, if you can't afford a Breville, go wise is great too. I've had the go wise, I've had the Phillips, I've had an Instant Pot one. 
they're all pretty good. Aw, thank you. Someone said, Cheryl, you're such a nice person. And then again, so is Kathy, that we compliment each other. She didn't feel like that when I was like hot-headed when she was leaving, when I had to do my live. I, I apologize for having to leave, but I knew if I didn't get that appointment, I wasn't going to get another one. That's okay. I'm not mad about that. All right, so i got to write down some stuff because I'm going to, um, okay. Because I have to pay attention so I can give people recipes. All right, so we're going to saute some onions, some peas. I've got some of these little tomatoes from my garden. I thought we'd use those. And we're going to make samosa potatoes. Do I need to get any other spices? I think I have everything with me. quite ready to go. All right, so I've got my little induction burner and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give these onions just a little chop and I'm probably only going to use about a quarter of an onion. This is probably a quarter cup. So I'll say a quarter cup. minced onion and you guys know this trick I'm sure I'm not the best with knife skills but uh, in case you don't know I am better than Cheryl but that's not saying a whole lot that's like saying Cheryl is better than me at sports oh evidently I do not have do not disturb on either Living my best life today, people. Focus. Do not disturb. Until tomorrow. All right. So when you're holding a knife, you can hold the point and you kind of rock it and go back and forth. This is when I do that the most. And what that means is you can't cut yourself. <laughs> So if you're feeling unconfident, and I know there are people who go faster and who are better at this than me, but this is a safe way of doing it. And I'm wondering, should we, I liked all of you were saying about the mashed potatoes. I'm wondering if we should make some kind of loaded baked potatoes, but, uh, loaded mashed baked potatoes. But I don't really have any bacony element at this point, and I'm not sure we have time to make it tonight. Could just throw some liquid smoke or smoked paprika in there and call it a day. So, if you love onions and you like the crunch and the feel of them, don't cut them up this small. Cheryl hates them, like hates them. Like she doesn't, for a long time, she didn't know exactly how many onions she was eating because she just had, she didn't like them. But really, usually people who don't like onions, they don't like raw onions or they don't like big pieces the way they feel in their mouth. Oftentimes, minced onion takes care of it. Also, when we're making a filling like we are now, minced onions means a better consistent product as well. You know, so minced and cooked, Cheryl can do. Oh, and uh, Angela said she's going to look into those sneakers. These are the what? Are, what are the name? Are these the Torrens? Torin 7s, and I find they have a little more cushion than the Torin 6s. Cheryl loves the Lone Peaks, and she liked Zero Shoes. And I know, I don't know if you guys know Jean-Pierre or JP that Chef AJ does stuff with. He loves Zero Shoes, too. Hey, Seven Piece Frog. It is awesome to see you. Okay, so I'm just going to... Much like we did before. Call it in the pan, heat up a little bit. I don't worry about that quite as much when, and I'm going to put a little water in there because I'm teaching and I might not pay attention. 
I, and I'm going to also rinse the onion off my hand before I wipe it all over my shirt. Oh, Cheryl says I have some on my back. Well, that's exciting. Um, you know, when you know, you know, right? Okay. So I'm going to get a little spatula to be moving these guys around. And I'm going to cut up some of the tomatoes. We've got garlic, ginger. We've got some, I think everything else there. And Guy said I made a potato and asparagus soup today with well your world cheese sauce. Yummy! That sounds delicious. Okay. And these are from my garden. That one still looks a little, a little hanky. So we're just going to cut some of these guys up. I am not the hugest fan of cherry tomatoes. And these, I, these cherry tomatoes, I bought one and it had three in there. And they are just going crazy. This is not all of them by any means. I'm going to get a serrated knife. Because it's not loving this knife. And it's, it's going to pop and get ushy. I would like that not to happen. So I'm just going to kind of cut these. And you can cut them in as small as you want. This is my ambition right at this moment. I'm going to get tired of it quickly. <laughs> if you don't have homegrown tomatoes, use a can. Use a can um, of diced tomatoes. I probably with this, I think we're going to end up putting about half a cup. A can is usually about a cup and a half. Now I'm going back and cutting these smaller because sometimes you just got to go with your OCD a little bit. You know? <laughs> Some days you just got to be you. And these do not have to be yellow tomatoes at all. Mine just are yellow. So they could be anything you want from there, from your garden or the store. This induction burner is Duxtop, D-U-X-T-O-P, which when I was doing some research seems to be the one to get because I had a different one and it just got a little weird. Like actually it was starting to make weird sounds and things like that. So, and oh, that was not a good one. Um, so that's why I got a different one. And we're just cooking up those onions. I'm also going to, so let, and I'm gonna write down what I put in. And my classes are different than most people's classes because a lot of times we will make recipes right, right in class. And I think it's important because I think a lot of times people end up seeing recipe development as magic instead of it's really just trial and error. And that's also why I've been doing some real world cooking lives and um, that's where I do my recipes different because maybe I'm looking at a recipe and I don't have all those things. What does that look like? I think this is good and I think this is about a half a cup. Um, it's ultra, A-L-T-R-A, and I really like them. I was finding that one part of my foot was getting a little bit numbish, and these really give you some room. So I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of garlic in here. Very similar to how we did the aloe gobi. 
We're picking everything down. We want these tomatoes or these onions not to be white like that, like solid white, but more translucent. And again, if you can't, if you need something that's not a visual clue, you can put it in your mouth and it should feel soft, not bitey flavor-wise, and it should be very soft. So it's just a different a different way. I'm going to get my ginger back out in a minute too. But one of the reasons of doing these meal prep classes at all is just so you can see how you can make some of these things and then just have them for the next four or five meals or four or five days. Potatoes in particular do not freeze well, though I may freeze some of that allegobe. It's just not going to be the perfect texture. It's not going to be the end of the world. Okay, so let's put about two teaspoons, well, teaspoon and a half of garam masala. We're going to do a half a teaspoon of cumin. I'm going to write all these down. We're going to do a half teaspoon of turmeric ish. It's okay if it's not perfect. And we're going to do a teaspoon of coriander. That is the instant pot telling me my other potatoes are done, but they will stay warm and be happy. All right. And so what I'm doing, and this is the thing that's different, and again, I may need some more water in a minute because things are starting to stick. I'm basically toasting the spices now in this dry pan. And when you do this, immediately you notice the flavor change or the aroma changing. You can actually taste it just from smelling it. That's why I said taste by mistake anyhow. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. And again, then it's going to start looking like one of those Indian mixes that you see either at the Indian grocery store or Whole Foods. And you can, we can do it a different way, but this toasting really adds, um, adds a lot of flavor. Uh, I will come back. Silver Moon, and I can add in the induction burner. Our Cheryl can go onto my computer on Safari and do it, but I don't know if she knows how to do it. That was a hint. She didn't look like she was understanding. I'm going to go ahead and push these tomatoes because we want to cook them down because they're fresh. Can you go onto my computer on the Safari browser? Go to Amazon and look up this induction burner, and then I can come tell you what to do next. Because unless you can see, you can get an Amazon link to put in the live. All right, we still need ginger, so we're going to grab that ginger, which I think I put back in the freezer. Yeah. And notice, if I'm prepping, I'm not going to wash this 17 times. Oh, Terry, this skillet is a look-alike of like that every pan or whatever that everybody gets mad that bloggers show all the time. But I got it at Costco. No, I got it at Sam's Club. Costco has one now, and it has a little steamer. It's a really nice pan. And there's a lid. There's a steamer. It's really good for steaming seitan. I'm going to put probably about a tablespoon. A tablespoon is about an inch of a knob of ginger. This pan doesn't allow me, well, does it? Sort of allows me to hold it on the edge. It's easier if you can have something to put it on, but be careful. Yeah, I made actually um, a yellow curry that you can watch me make. I make it up um, on the YouTube channel. I think I made it two weeks ago or a week ago. Maybe it's only been a week. All right. And you want 
more ginger, add more ginger. If you don't like ginger that much, don't add as much ginger. Live your best life. This is your dinner. This might be the only thing you have control over today. Okay. And we can come through and we can squish some of the, the tomatoes. And again, if the tomatoes weren't raw, they wouldn't need to cook quite this long. So um, it's called Tremonita, but at Costco right now they have this skillet. I think it's about 50 bucks. The Fancy Pants Influencer brand is like $100 or $200. Just go to Costco. Get your friend to take you to Costco if you can. Oh, I love doll. I love Indian food, and I just, I really love it a lot. Okay, we're going to put some peas in here. Peas, here's, here's a fact. Peas are one of my least favorite vegetables, but Cheryl's most favorite. So we're going to put about a cup of peas, half a cup to a cup of peas. How much do I have left in this bag? That's how many peas we're putting in there. It's probably about a cup. I'll let you see. I'm not going to leave 10 peas in here to say I did an exact cup. And I don't want you to do that either because that's wasteful and confusing. Um, yeah, I'll go over there real quick. So I'm gonna say half to one cup frozen peas. If they're fresh, you're gonna have to cook them a little longer. Now, it would be perfect, the timing with this. Then we're gonna scrape all that potato out of our potatoes and add that in here too. Could you use different vegetables? Absolutely. Could you make it more colorful? Of course you can. If you're, you know, just whatever you want. Oh, no Costco in the panhandle. Oh, that's, that's no fun at all. Okay, let me go show Cheryl. You guys can watch the peas. Be one with the pea. Take a deep breath. Enjoy the green. Right here, you can get it. No, I said you had to do it on Safari. Oh, sorry. I was very. I thought I was. Uh, no, I was specific because it's not working right now on Chrome. You guys are like, what are you talking about? I'm over here talking stuff with Cheryl. <laughs> See. And and can you put that in the chat with induction burner Kathy uses? Things stop working all the time, especially in a food blogger world. I'm gonna leave that little bit of ginger out. So the way I get my links on Amazon, my affiliate links, and an affiliate link means if you buy it from me, I think I get anywhere from 1% to 5% at no additional charge to you. So if you always feel like, God, those bloggers, they're always trying to get my money really not but you know every little bit helps because we have to buy the groceries and the equipment and all that stuff so that's my spiel for all the bloggers oh Raw Chef Yen you are in Kathy's Cookie Club right now right here um, oh you're so welcome Terry I really do like this skillet and I can um This is the steamer that comes with it. So you can steam a lot of dumplings or seitan, like big pieces of seitan. I've done, I had a class that was all gluten-free sausages. So there was no seitan in there, but we still steam them. It used some flours, like oat flour and teff flour and stuff with vegetables. Okay, so we stop playing with this. And now I need to scrape some stuff out of my potatoes. Okay. So I'm basically, this is a, a potato class, potato meal prep class. So I may not do this perfectly. So I just kind of checked to see if they were doing okay. I'm going to get as much potato out as I'm able without breaking through to the bottom of the skin. If I break through to the bottom of the skin, it's not like game over and I have to put in more quarters. 
it's just, it's a goal, right? And it's okay if it doesn't come out perfectly. That's always the deal. We do as close as we can. And why would I want to make stuffed potato samosas instead of making samosas? Well, it's, if you can't have gluten, you can't have wonton skins, which is a really nice shortcut, obviously non-traditional. But the pastry requires some oil. Okay, so we're looking at about like that. If you want to get fancier, we could, we could go in here and shave a little more off. And I'm just kicking it to the side. Everything's clean. I've sterilized my um, counter before I do a live. <laughs> just so I can plop things on here. If you have a grapefruit spoon, and I don't think I have one up here. No. A grapefruit spoon can be good, too, just to kind of cut in some of that. But look, if somebody has something to say to you negative when you hand them a beautiful <laughs> samosa stuffed potato for dinner, that's when you go, I bet they have a table reserved for you at the restaurant, and I will gladly show you the door. I'm really big right now on people need to be thankful and grateful, and I'm working on it myself. I know it's been a rough couple of years, but there are a lot of people in the world that have made our lives easier. Cashiers, delivery people. And so let's do our best to return that favor now. Okay? Holds together. This is also what I was talking about. If you use this as sandwich bread and smush it down, it looks like a wheat bun. I'm very excited about trying some things with that. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. I'm going to add a little more water. I'm adding a little extra water because I know I'm going to be over here hollowing out another potato. Um, some carrots would be good in here. Right? Angela, Angela agrees with me. Yeah, a lot of people have made our lives easier. Let's try to make other people's lives easier now. See if I can straighten this up so it doesn't make you so dizzy. Okay. And almost always I will make a hole in one of my potatoes. And, and I really let it get to me. See, this is close, but not quite, because you can't see my finger. And just, you know, I've been taking life a little bit too seriously. Getting upset about things that aren't helping me. You know, I've been really worried that I haven't gotten some recipes up for you guys or, you know, but me worrying about it doesn't make it happen. It just makes everything take longer. Okay. You just want to leave some sort of, oop, there it goes. There's my hole. And you know what? No one's going to know. You guys will know, but don't tell anyone, okay? So what do you guys like to double stuff your potatoes with? Another thing we could do is take all of this, mix it with yogurt, nutritional yeast, roasted garlic, anything you would mashed potatoes. We could make some carrot bacon, crumble it up. You can make potato peel bacon. It's all up to you. Sometimes I'll even just make it into mashed potatoes with nutritional yeast on a day that I don't have any more energy than that. And it's still just thrilling. All right. And I may try a side drawer. I'll use my baby masher. See, there's a piece of the peel. And I'm going to leave it in there. I'm like, my best life is being led right now. <laughs> Set this aside. I'm going to wash my hands because I have potato all over them. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Ro Chef Lynn. You are awesome. So it's just some different 
potions and powders. So you guys, I am starting to work on my next ebook, which hopefully will be available this fall, possibly next month. And it's gonna be all the potions and powders. So it's gonna be spice blends, dry vegetable powders, and DIY sauces that are all whole food, plant-based, no oil. So if, you're, if there's one you've been really looking for, please email it to me, the name of it, um, to kathyhester at gmail.com. This will probably turn out to be a multi-book series, but I have pretty much enough for a book already. Oh, you're so sweet. Jody says, please don't worry about us. You do you, and we'll just enjoy what we have, <laughs> what you can share with us. That's very sweet. Um, oh, good. Silver Moon got it. And honestly, if you guys don't want an induction burner, but you know you need some cumin powder, if you go through that link, I also get credited as the affiliate. But don't go out of your way. But just know, for me and other bloggers, Chef AJ, any people on YouTube, it really does help keep the lights on and pay the mortgage and stuff like that. And it doesn't cost anything extra. They quit doing, I don't know if you knew this, so for a long time, they did a thing where you could go through a special link and it would go, like, it would go to Durham Animal Rescue, Dur Durham ASPCA, and Amazon canceled that program. So if you were doing something like that before, just know that none of that money is going to that organization anymore. I'm pretty sure it's been canceled. Okay, I use salt, so I'm going to add some salt. If you don't use salt, if you're SOS or SOFIS free, all you need to do, make a little blend, put it in a little jar, to make a little larger jar than this, a tablespoon of onion powder, a tablespoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of ground celery seed, mix it together really well, use it as salt, for things like um, like this. You don't want this to taste like Mrs. Dash, right? We don't want lemon, we don't want oregano or basil or any of those flavors. And sounds like cooking is also about sounds and smells and how things feel. So I was hearing that it was cooking dry. Smile, thank you, Penny, I appreciate that. Um, and don't forget on healthy slow cooking, I have some dry mixes like for gravy and cheese powder and stuff like that. Okay. So I added a little bit of water in here. I'm going to get one of my tester spoons and I'm just going to taste it and see if we need something else. There is no other way in the world to know than to taste it. Oh my gosh, so good. I want to add I'm going to add just a pinch of coriander, a pinch of garam masala, and I think I'm going to put just a little bit more ginger. I just like to jazz it up a little bit more for me. We're not eating these tonight. So I'm just going to make them, and then we'll heat them up in the oven or the air fryer. And that's when they'll cook and get a nice crispy top. But for now, we just want to get this mixture right. And so since I'm going to heat them again, I can add a little more ginger, because that's going to cook down a little bit. It won't be quite as sharp let you look at this mix and see and this is even with me cutting up little tomatoes it was pretty easy if I have leftover mixture I'm gonna turn this off I could use it to put on something else let's see how we can do right now And you could just sprinkle, after you cook them, you could sprinkle them with 
um, fresh chopped cilantro. You could add a little more ground or freshly grated ginger. If you have a tamarind sauce, that's really good. You can buy samosa tamarind sauce. You could use a mint or cilantro chutney. Would be delightful. And just drizzle them over the top. That is what I heard is that they were canceling Amazon Smile. So if they haven't canceled it yet, if someone can tell me, but they, the last time I heard it was happening was a while ago. So I would have thought it would have happened by now. I was very disappointed in that. But, you know, when the pandemic happened, Amazon put in half what bloggers earn on commissions. It used to be we'd earn like 5 to 10%, and now it's 1 to 3% usually. Some things have some specials. You know, like Black Friday sometimes, or if there's a special holiday, they will give us a few more pennies. But nobody, you know, is making bank when you buy your turmeric, I promise. Like, <laughs> but it does, like I said, it does help, but, you know, I, I've seen some people say some disparaging things about people on YouTube, um, and, and like me, who encourage you to get a Ninja Creamy. Well, I can tell you what, you weren't buying the Ninja Creamy from me nine out of ten times. And that's okay. I don't tell you to get a product because I'm trying to make a bazillion dollars off of it. I'm telling you because I think it's a good product and that we can do some really cool whole food plant-based things with it. Right? But if you really love someone's recipes or their blog or their YouTubes, no matter who they are, me or someone else, that always helps. You know, it all adds up. Look at that. Uh, it is, okay, Heidi said it is canceled, and so did Hera. And I thought it was. Yeah, I was very sad. And, because here's the thing, I don't know if they made an announcement or told people that it was happening or not either. Okay, we've got two more recipes to get to. But let me show you this one. Don't those look yummy? And I'm gonna store them in the fridge like this. You could put them in the freezer, but the bottom parts can get funky. So it gets kind of, potato frozen gets kind of watery and mealy. Now that doesn't mean you can't get stuffed potatoes in the freezer section either. So you do what's important with you. But what I would do with these, because they, they're pretty, but they certainly look wholesome. But take some non-dairy yogurt and drizzle, then take some tamarind sauce and drizzle, and then either chop cilantro or a mint or cilantro chutney, and they will look crazy amazing, like fancy, fancy meal. And this was a very inexpensive thing to do. If you didn't have tomatoes at all, you could just not use them. And you could use, if you didn't have green peas, and let's say you had corn, peas, and carrots, I don't know about you, but where I live, I've seen those in samosas because somebody didn't want to cut them up. You could put them in here and you'd have a little more color. But to me, since we can't have samosas, they're deep fried, they're in a pastry with oil, I'm on a no oil diet. This is not me telling you you shouldn't have them. In fact, if you can eat samosas and they work for you, you should eat one for me because that was one of my favorite things. So this is going to be an amazing dinner. And, you know, we'll probably serve a big salad with it maybe some steamed vegetables, or maybe we'll actually even have just a half instead of a whole, and then have some rice and some dal and some aloo gobi. And again, these Indian restaurants, or Indian recipes that I'm doing, are not traditional Indian food recipes. They're my version and interpretation of them. Um, just so everyone's clear on that. I love Indian food and I could eat it three meals a day for the rest of my life. And I, so 
I, I'm always trying to learn and do better. Okay, this still has a little to go. These are our potatoes that we're gonna make some mashed potatoes with. So let me see. Let me get some miso out because I haven't really been doing miso with my mashed potatoes. Also, I have, ooh, you know what I bet would be. Oh, let's look at some of this too. And I will get some, who packed this fridge, people? Uh, another thing I wanted to show you guys, a few easy things to do, just as, oh, I don't have time for all this stuff, Kathy. Why do you keep telling me all these things that I can't do? Got some goodies to put in things. I want to show you some stuff I got at Sprouts. There we go. Soy milk. And let's also, I'm going to pour the potatoes out through. Cheryl, put it away. Thank you, Cheryl, for washing my big colander. I appreciate it because I'm going to use it now. And sometimes, we've talked about this on my live, sometimes I'll save some of the potato water. So all you have to do, check it with a fork if, if you've never done it before. You didn't have to have a fancy Instant Pot, you can see, they're fine. They, you know, they're gonna be great. I think today, I'm gonna do just, yogurt and milk if I can get away with it. You can always add some regular water too. So I'm just going to take this, pour it into the big strainer, get most of that water out, then pour them right back in. And I would do this if this was a pot on the stove. And I'm going to Cancel this, and I'm going to pull this little thing over here. So what I wanted to show you, if you have mashed potatoes in the fridge, your life is golden. All of these different fancy things. Now, I'm not saying you should always buy food that's in plastic or anything like that. These were 99 cents. We're going to be going away, so having this is going to be awesome. So let me show you what, these were all like $4 normally. Kohlrabi slaw. There's kohlrabi, sa savoy cabbage, kale, carrots, and broccoli. You know what that says? Here's a vegetable mix you do not have to cut up tonight, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you, past self. Kale and veggies. Throw a little Asian sauce on there. Serve it with rice. And I mean by Asian sauce, it could be teriyaki. You get one of those pre-made sauces or go on healthyslowcooking.com and make my super easy um, garlic sauce. I do a broccoli and garlic sauce. It's my version of what I had in Americanized Chinese restaurants. So again, not authentic Chinese food. <laughs> um, but that's a great way. This one has broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, and snow peas. So I know I'm gonna be busy and probably tonight we're gonna to have mashed potatoes with one of these. And another thing that I've been doing, I made a big thing of sauerkraut, my very first thing of sauerkraut. And I've been pulling some of that out and using it to season things. So it's really great. And then this one is a teriyaki vegetables and sauce. So it has a, sometimes I just don't use the sauce packages, but this one did not have any oil it might have some stuff in there that you're not personally okay with. But you, this still has Brussels sprouts, broccoli stock, broccoli florets, red cabbage, kale, carrot, and may contain snap peas. <laughs> that sounds weird, but that's what it says. So these are super easy ways. Now I can even, let's say, if these look like they're not gonna last from when we get back, I'll saute them up and throw them in the freezer. Sometimes I'll even put them with some mashed potatoes or some already cooked rice and have my own frozen meals. Another thing that's amazing that I like a lot 
And there's a few different ones of these. These are beans. These are tomato with vodka can cannellini beans. There's like some, there's like a curry with coconut milk. These may or may not be perfect for your diet, but you can get a lot of seasoned canned beans. Wegmans has them now too. And another thing at Trader Joe's, I got this um, pulled jackfruit and barbecue sauce. That would be a great easy meal during the week to eat with my mashed potatoes. I could just, you know, saute up some of this kohlrabi slaw, layer it up, have a perfectly nutritious meal without a lot of effort. So the whole thing about meal prepping is not that you do it perfectly. It's not that you eat the same thing for lunch every day for a week. It's that you're making it easier for your future self. So sometimes I've just cooked baby potatoes and baked a bunch of russets and sweet potatoes and I meal prepped. Maybe I will cut up some vegetables if I, if I don't have the find of 99 cent cut up vegetables. But think outside of, well today I have to cook a three, three course meal or today I have to do this. Just look at it like that. Um, and I miss Kroger's. There were Kroger's here in North Carolina and they took them away. So we have Harris Teeters, which are Kroger's that are not as varied and are more expensive. And they did that right before the pandemic. So I'm a little bitter about it. Um, Cause Kroger's is amazing. Um, oh, hi Dahlia, it's awesome to see you guys. Okay, so for those of you who are just joining us, this is a, an exciting mishap that you have stumbled upon, which is Kathy's Cooking Club being public. So enjoy. We've made aloo gobi, my version of aloo gobi. We've made samosa stuffed potatoes. We have made smashed potatoes that we've done in the air fryer. We're making some fancy smancy mashed potatoes now. So. You can use yellow fence, you can use any potato. I find that, you know, these are a little waxier, but I've been finding my russets are pretty waxy. Do you know what really matters in mashed potatoes? That you like it. <laughs> That's all that matters. Um, unless you're trying to get a job at a fancy restaurant, or I don't know, you're trying to win an award, maybe. I wouldn't know about either of those. <laughs> so I just, I develop recipes. So you just want to smush them as much as possible. Also, as we, this is a very heavy duty masher. There's another one that has a spring and has two mashers. So if your wrists aren't great with this, and, and that's another thing that I didn't say, the pre prep vegetables, there's no shame in getting cut up butternut squash. If your personal goal is to, is environmental reasons, you may choose not to use plastic. But someone who just can't use a knife or have the strength to do that, oh, you're gonna do the potato? I already did the potatoes. Oh, I thought you were hinting that your You can say, no, she, was, she thought I was hinting for her to come do the potatoes because my wrists actually get a little weak sometimes. So, but just realize everybody has their goal and I support you in that goal, but someone who has wrist or mobility issues can't break down a butternut squash necessarily like you can. That's why there's all the different choices. Oh, that's all. You're so funny. Silver Moon says she's rolling on the floor. I don't think I'm that funny, but I'm glad you guys are all here. So this is the compliant yogurt that I found. Is it perfectly compliant? No. What's not perfectly compliant about it? It's made with almonds. It's Kite Hill unsweetened plain almond milk. So it's got almond milk, water and almonds, starch, citrus fiber, locust bean gum, xanthan gum, live cultures. Um, it's got 10 grams of fat per three quarters of a cup. So it's a little high in fat. However, we are using it as a condiment. We're using it like, 
back in the day, pre-vegan, you might have used sour cream. So it, it still fits in. With the starch solution, you can have nuts if it's not causing you weight gain. Obviously, I am still trying to release more weight. But this is my, right now one of my exceptions that I make. But it's not... Um, I think Silver Moon has a crush on Cheryl. He says, hi, laugh well, Cheryl, sweet lady. <laughs> if somebody flirts with Cheryl, she just like lowers her head and goes away. She's very funny. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is, is now you're going to kind of live your best life. I'm probably going to put about a quarter cup. Let's-ish, maybe a half cup. Let's, let's call it a half a cup of yogurt in there. I have some cool things. And I love soy yogurt, and I usually make soy yogurt myself. So here's some miso. Um, you guys will remember this from the Korean class. And I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but like samjung. And it's like miso on steroids. It's funkier, and it's delicious smelling. It's not spicy, even though it's red. It is a soy paste. So you really can add any of these. Let me get a spoon to put, well, let me get a measuring spoon. I think we may put a tablespoon in, because that's just what I got. I know that Dr. Greger talks about the salt and miso being a little more, um, available. And let me tell you, this organic red miso actually doesn't have a very strong flavor. So if you're using a darker miso that's strong and super salty, you might want to use just a teaspoon to start out with. But this one just really isn't much. All right. Doo, doo, doo. There we go. Okay, so I've got that in there. And that's going to give it some yummy umami flavor. Another thing you could do for that is add some tomato powder or mushroom powder. I'm probably going to have to mash that in there again. But let's see. Oh, you're fine. She all thinks she's making too much noise. I think we're fine. So this was a lot of yogurt. But I'm making fancy pants potatoes. You could also just have mashed potatoes and mash them like this and have your sauce be the fancy part. I am for sure going to take out my masher to get that, see the big piece of soy there? I just want to mash it up in there a little more. We could put garlic, roasted garlic. We could do all kinds of things. You could use a white miso to make it not change color. Like you can see how the red miso is changing the color a little bit. Oh, I'm just teasing Silver Moon. Don't worry at all. I'm totally just teasing. Cheryl just is so funny. If someone flirts with her a little bit, she gets all shy. She thinks she's shy, but y'all who've watched her lives now know she is not shy. She likes to think she's all shy and quiet. Don't you, honey? Mm-hmm, she says. I think that'll help a little bit. Do you want to come over here and taste this? Yeah. Mashed potatoes. With what? Magic. She said with what? Okay, there is some little spots in there. Happy magic or Cheryl magic? <laughs> here, let's taste it and see. I still have to mix this a little better because you can see some of the... Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is just so why do these taste so good? You've got the tang from the yogurt and also a little bit of the tang and saltiness from the miso. I am going to go ahead and add, I could either add more miso or a little bit of salt. I think I'm going to add a little bit of salt. I think I'm going to add a little bit of roasted garlic powder. 
So what is a little bit of salt? Half teaspoon to a teaspoon, depending on your taste. Let's also go ahead and add a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Oh, and I should be writing this down. So what did I do? I did one tablespoon of miso, one tablespoon of nooch, half to one teaspoon salt, half a cup of yogurt. And right now, I don't think it needs any thinning out of things. So to me, the because what's going to happen, if, if I put these in the fridge, if they're not for tonight, they're going to thicken up. So you've got to think about that too. And I'm just trying to also spread out the miso goodness. But I also think that the, um, this is the mild version. There's a spicy version. That could be really neat too. And if you do any oils, if you wanted to make kind of like a Korean flavored mashed potato, you could put some gochugong and a little bit of sesame oil in there too. And that would be really fascinating. Just to have, you know, like sometimes it is fun to have curried mashed potatoes or things that are kind of a mashup of cultures. Okay. I said I was going to put garlic in there and I didn't. So let's do that now. Do, do, do. I just have to find it. There we go. So in the big spice drawer, roasted garlic. It's um, a Penzi's roasted garlic, and I love that. Probably going to put, and you could, here's the other thing you could do. You could put snippets of herbs. Probably this, with the roasted garlic, is pretty pungent. So I would use about a half teaspoon to start with. Another thing that you could mix in here, instead of all this, would be like a nice balsamic. Or a little bit, you know, of orange zest. You could really get crazy. It doesn't have to be just like your mom made them, but how you want to make them. Oh, you could totally add pepper in there. Let's see, I'm still folding in some of that um, miso. You can see sometimes we get a little bit of that color coming up. I'm just gonna taste that. Mmm. I think with these, for me right now, I would rather put like some toasted sesame seeds on top than pepper. Or there's, let me see, do I have it available? There's a spicy Japanese condiment that has sesame seeds and pepper. I bet I'm not gonna, I have so many weird spices up here, I might not find them. <laughs> no, Cheryl's like, throw some everything bagel on it, no. But so these are just kind of, they're different mashed potatoes. But I will say, using a little bit of yogurt, so a few other things I've been doing with this yogurt, if you're just tuning in, so I'm taking the yogurt, putting kalanamak, which is an Indian black salt, and it tastes like mayonnaise. That's it. I'm not putting any lemon juice in there because it's already tangy. Can you make the tofu mayo with a little apple cider vinegar or lemon juice and lemon zest and kalanama? Absolutely. I can make one tablespoon of this in a second. So that's why we've been doing this. We've also Gosh, I've been making ranch dressing with it. I use it a lot. And you can put it on, so if we didn't want to make fancy stuff, mashed potatoes, if this was your meal prep day and you're tired, you could stop and just mix this in with some nutritional yeast and have that kind of stuffed potato. So I thought the one last thing that we would do, so this is just, you can also make plain mashed potatoes and you could flavor it per meal. So if you were gonna have it for two or three different meals, you could then add in miso, spices, herbs, things like that. I would go ahead and still mash it with either some non-dairy milk or some yogurt. And because these, I bought this at the store and these now cost $10, I'm gonna put this back in the fridge now. <laughs>
I've got, we've got to get my soy maker, soy milk maker fixed in a video of it. It's ready to be fixed. It's just not yet. Okay. So let's see what, I'm going to put this over here with the aloe gobi. Did you wash this stuff already? Yeah, okay. I'll take that then. Everything else. Awesome. Thank you so much. It will be so nice to not have to clean up as much. All right. I am going to do a new off sometime in the future, just not quite yet. Um, so, yeah. How would I reheat my meals? That is a great, great question. Cheryl is going to put them in the microwave. I'm probably going to put it in the air fryer. Um, sometimes I heat it up on the stove. If we, we usually have a big batch of rice. And rice I do a little bit differently. If I'm heating it up on the stove or in the microwave, I add a tablespoon of water, have a cover which has like a vent on it, and I cook it a little longer so it actually re-steams the rice and makes it feel fresh and delicious instead of, mmm, that was leftovers. Glad I ate right? Uh, with the potatoes that we're talking about, the samosa potatoes, I will put those in the air fryer. If we reheat the mashed potato or the smashed potatoes, those would go in the air fryer. Mashed potatoes regular will either go in the stove or in the microwave. Aloe gobi will either be on the stove or the microwave. And how I would decide, so like usually the first time we eat stuff, we eat together and I'll heat it up on the stove. Then any leftovers I have, or maybe I only heat up half of the aloe gobi. I will take the rice that we just cooked tomorrow and I will package it with the aloe gobi so that we really have something just to take out and put in the microwave for lunch. If we don't eat those in a certain number of days, those move down to the freezer downstairs and there are backup emergency food. So does that help shrinking shadow, I hope? Oh, and more comments, okay. Oh, that was not what I meant to click. Let's see. Making roasted spaghetti squash for dinner tonight with potatoes, like your mashed potatoes. Oh, awesome. So last night, um, a neighbor gifted us some spaghetti squashes. So I'm super excited, so I cut one in half. I put some water in a, like a 9 by 16 casserole, poked holes, cooked it for about 30 minutes, then the other half needed to go another 10 minutes, then we just kind of got the spaghetti, and Cheryl doesn't like to eat out of like vegetables, so I got, got it all out of the, the um, skin, you could eat it right in there. We cooked up an actual veggie, veggie burger, that's a brand. We chopped it up and did some tomato sauce. And it was a really easy dinner. So while it was cooking, the spaghetti squash, I could go do something else. Cheryl was working, came home, and then she cooked the burgers and heated up the sauce. So one way of thinking of meal planning is, and one of the things that we do all the time, have potatoes ready to eat, have sweet potatoes ready to eat. And sweet potato out of the fridge makes a beautiful dessert with a little bit of soy milk or non-dairy yogurt, and some pumpkin pie spice, uh, either a sprinkle of brown sugar or some maple syrup, something like that. So that could be really good. Ooh, dill pickle pizza. That sounds delicious. Um, <laughs> I get you. And so a little bit, people should mind their own business. <laughs> The older I get, I'm getting crankier about people not minding their business. But yeah, people who eat whole food, plant-based, no oil, typically weigh less than people who necessarily eat a lot of oil or maybe other ways. And you're you. I'm me. We're going to do, I'm losing weight on purpose because of a health issue that I'm trying to correct. <coughs> um... Before I was trying to correct this, I didn't talk about losing weight at all because it's a, such a touchy topic. Those of you that are thin or those of you who want to know everybody's story, make sure you're asking in a polite way if you really want to know the story. 
you're really just trying to make somebody feel bad because they're not as thin as you, I think you need to think about that. What does that give you? I think we do so much more good being supportive and helpful. That's why my community, as you guys can see, supportive, helpful, wonderful people. And that's who we want to hang out with. We want to hang out with the people who can support us, lift us up, and while we get better. So, right? And, and there's nothing wrong with being thin. There's nothing wrong with being heavy. Be where you're comfortable. Like even Chef AJ says, you know, eat the way that supports how you feel the best. And I think that's a great way to think about it. And I, I think sometimes when people watch a lot of people talking about weight loss, they feel like it gives them permission to comment on other people's bodies. So I have nothing nice to say about that, so I will say nothing and, and go on. You can tell I've had a long, hard day, right? Um, but yeah, like Dee hangs out with me all the time. She's not saying mean things because she's thin and I'm not. So there's a perfect example. You can see like, and you're the best at emojis. Like sometimes I have to literally like look things up to figure out what you're saying. I'm, I'm 58 and a half, one foot in the grave as far as some of that stuff goes. Okay, who wants to make one more thing? Because classes are long and life is exciting. I'm gonna give some of this to Cheryl and then I'm gonna try and make something that may or may not work. You guys with me? You feel you feeling the uh, rebellion, the excitement? <laughs> so most of you have seen me make my oat cheese. I want to see if I can make something similar that has some pumpkin in it too. So, and I have some other things here that were for if I pivoted, did not pivot that way. You guys are awesome. All right, so the basis of my oat cheese sauce, besides magic, right? Because how else can you make something with oats and some cornstarch and water and have, any, have something beautiful happen is cornstarch. I use organic cornstarch if you're allergic to corn like Marion is. You can use tapioca starch. This is gonna be, I gotta get some water. Like, just get water in here. It's going to be loud because I'm going to use my blender, my high speed blender, because we're going to heat it up and that's how it's going to thicken everything. But I love this because it's really inexpensive. You cover your little thing up. Cover, oh. Sorry, cover oh, I didn't mean for it to be covered. Sorry. Mayday, mayday. Um, I need a measuring thing. Get a couple of these going. And these all, there we go. And we'll get a couple of spices going. I'm going to use probably my normal garlic powder, onion powder, and jalapeno powder which are my go-to queso spices. Our cavasa, I'm not sure, cassava, I don't know why, I don't know why I said it that way. Cavasa, like I'm just making up words now. See, Kathy's Cooking Club is fun. Oh, kielbasa, Polish kielbasa, maybe. All right, pumpkin puree. You guys already know that this could be butternut squash and not really pumpkin. If you don't, I'm sorry, I just brought some news to you. Um, but it's all delicious. If you want to, you can bake a butternut squash, a pie pumpkin, which are the small pumpkin looking ones and not the giant pumpkin looking ones just because they're more flavorful. Okay, so we're gonna put in the blender, and if we didn't use a high-speed blender, 
that gets hot. We can still blend this, whisk it and heat it up on the stove, and then I would blend it a second time to make it smooth because it'll get a little icky. So this is the first time I'm trying adding some pumpkin and stuff to it. So there's gonna be some trial and error. So I'm going to use, I'm gonna try a half cup of oats. So this is, this is how I develop a recipe. I have notes over here, and then I'll change it as I go. All right, we've got a half a cup of oats. Let's, I'm still team one cup of oats. We might make extra of this and we can freeze it. So one cup of oats. We're gonna do one teaspoon of cornstarch. And we can add it later. It's what's going to thicken everything up. We are going to add two cups of water to start with. I'm going to add a teaspoon of garlic powder, teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of jalapeno powder. And why powders instead of regular garlic? It's just you get a little bit more of a consistent flavor with it. It could be granulated, it could be powder, it's all okay. And it doesn't have to be super precise. You want it spicier, make it spicier. Um, use a nice chili powder. I always breathe this jalapeno powder and cough, so be prepared for when that happens. I would also, I'm trying not to breathe it. I'm gonna put a cup of pumpkin in here. And I may have to change some of the seasonings. So I'm not actually gonna try and make it into nacho cheese yet. So I've just put it in here to pretty much measure it and then I'm gonna put it in here. If I was making this all by myself and not sharing a recipe with you, I wouldn't measure it at all. I just see what my best life is gonna bring me. Okay, so I did one cup of pumpkin puree. Don't have pumpkin puree, it could be butternut squash, it could be sweet potato, right? It'll give a little bit different taste. All right, so we're gonna blend this up really nice. Let's also, let's do a quarter cup of nutritional yeast. And I'm going to do one teaspoon of salt, but you could do less if you, it's just the oats kind of usually call for a little more salt. You could also use my plain salt substitute that I talked about earlier. So this is, this is all flavor. This is none of thick and gooey. And we'll see, I've never added pumpkin into it. Oh, you know what else I wanted to add into it? I brought it out, didn't I? Yeah. So I have ancho chili powder and guajillo. And so I just went and got the dried ones. I took out the seeds and stems and I dehydrated them and just used a spice grinder. See, they're not perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and add I love ancho chili powder. It's kind of raisiny, sweet, and it's not spicy. So I'm gonna put a tablespoon in. And you could use either one. You don't really wanna use chili for the stew powder, that chili blend. It has other things in it. Um, it's gonna have garlic powder, onion powder. It might have salt in there too. Um, all right. So let's see what happens. And I'm blending it sheerly for flavor. Have a great morning walk, Chef Leanne. I'm so, I'm so thrilled that you came and joined us a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna take a taster spoon. 
and it's kind of nice and orangey. Some of that is from the pumpkin, some of that is from the ancho chili powder. Okay. It's got a really nice depth from the ancho chili. It may be a little spicy. Cheryl Free right this second. Okay, give it a go. I don't think it's too spicy. Also around the edges, there's still some oats, so I'm going to take a nice spatula. It's close though. It's real close. It's yeah. So what the the normal one I make doesn't have any pumpkin. So pumpkin adds more of a base and takes away some of the spice. Also, a delicious addition is either ancho or guajillo, New Mexican chili with pumpkin. It's like a beautiful meld. And I wouldn't add any more ancho, but I think I will add a little more garlic. I think we could use even like twice as much garlic. Well, actually, I'll just use half gar another half garlic and another half onion powder. Just to kind of balance out that darker flavor that we're getting from the ancho. And now, so we're going to basically scrape away these pieces of rolled oats that are here on the side because we want them to get nice and blended up. Nobody wants chunky queso unless it's full of rotel. And yes, Rotel goes in this grate. If this gets too thick, I will just end up thinning it out with some more water. You could also use non-dairy milk if you're heating it up later. Okay, and I'm going to use a teaspoon of organic cornstarch. Organic just means it's not GMO. So if you don't have, if you don't care and you use regular cornstarch, nothing is going to change, okay? Yeah, it's nachos. And I like spicy and hot, but not too hot. And you can, you totally can change this. Jalapeno powder gives a lot of flavor, a lot of that green sort of mid flavor without a lot of spice. So now it's going to go on for a while. So it's going to take about two minutes. So you're going to keep feeling here, and it's going to get warm. You're going to hear, and you hear, changes that's when it's getting thick if you catch it it's too thick you just add some more water I'm sorry, I know this is like, la oh, look, actually, it's pretty good. So see the thickness? That's pretty good. I think the pumpkin actually makes it a little bit better. But it could go thicker. 
since I want to leave it a little bit thinner so we can heat it up. I could also freeze this and heat it back up. It's going to be a little funky. So when you first start to heat it up, it's going to look dry and kind of weird, and you might have to whisk it with some other milk. But, oh, and here we go. Final tasties. Final tasties. I kind of like the orange nacho cheese color of it. This can be our fall nacho cheese. It's good. Mmm. It's really good. It's like a grown-up nacho cheese. Ooh. It is a grown-up nacho cheese. And here's the thing. If this tastes, it, it's definitely weighted to lower umami flavors. And if you're, like, missing a higher note, go ahead and just squeeze a little bit of lime juice in there, and that should even it out. Another thing, if you want to be crazy, I'm nacho cheesing on the weekend, you could put a little, maybe a shot of tequila or a shot of zero alcohol tequila in there. The zero alcohol tequila will have an extra kick from the chilies they put in to mimic that burn of alcohol. Um, so be careful with that. But that could be really interesting too. Another thing this could be good on is thicken it up a little more or later on in the week when it's thicker in the fridge naturally. Take it, roast your corn. Cheryl's gonna love this one. Then you get your corn, spread the cheese on it, put a little bit of like um, the lime chili seasoning like you use. There's, I've got two of them. I've got a Rancho Gordo and um, a Trader Joe's ones. Let me show you. So we put this on as our cheese and then sprinkle it with this and we'd have street corn. Wow. Yeah. And honestly, you could probably skip the chili, but see it's got the lime in there is what we want. Or, or you could squeeze lime on the corn. Usually when we roast the corn in the air fryer, we, squeeze, we take a slice of lime and rub it across all the corn rows. And then we put it in there for 400 for 10 to 15 minutes, depending until at least a couple of the corn kernels turn a little brownish. And then, like right now, this isn't thick enough, but like it'll thicken up a little bit more later. And that's what I would do. If you wanted to serve this now as a dip, I probably would have left it for another 30 seconds to one minute. Oftentimes, it's too thick. So this is one of the first times I've seen it not overly thick in a very, very long time. But I am going to freeze some of this and heat it up, and I can tell you a little more about how that works. But I figure I have like 10 sausage recipes. I need more nacho, nacho cheese recipes. The oat, the plain oat queso is on healthy slow cooking along with my cauliflower queso is on plant-based Instant Pot. I have a torchies queso made with potato. And if you have the Great Vegan Bean Book, I have a bean queso as well. Yeah, elote. Ah, uh, where do you buy? jalapeno powder. You can, I, you can get it a lot of places. The cheapest places that I found it is Target in the Hispanic section. It's like Badia, but also you can just get some jalapeno peppers from your local Hispanic market. I slice them, dehydrate them in my Breville and put them in the spice grinder. That's the cheapest way you can do it. And you can take the seeds out. So if you like the flavor of jalapenos but not the spice, then, you know, there you go. You're golden. So I, usually, I try to go to as many ethnic markets near me as I can for a few different reasons. One, I like to support the communities. That's a great thing. It's also cheaper. Like, if I bought an avocado or tomatillos or ancho ch chili, dried ancho chilies at Whole Foods, it sometimes can be four to ten times as much as me getting them at Campari Foods, right? So I get to support something, I get fresher food. The tomatillos often don't turn over fast enough at Whole Foods because they're overpriced. They're less expensive, they're fresher. Gives me a little more wiggle room in my own fridge, and I like that. Same thing with the Indian market. 
I like to go to the different Asian markets. Lee Ming's is a great one in Durham. H Mart is in Cary, a Korean grocery store that also has a lot of other international groceries. And you really can find the most amazing things. I don't live in a giant city, but we have a lot of ethnic markets. I know some of you who live way out may not have as much, but even Walmart has some pretty decent ethnic sections in the store and they're getting more and more things. And they even have a gluten-free section and they have some vegan specialty products I can't get anywhere else. Yeah, drying the peppers are just super, super easy. Do you guys have any questions? I know we've gone long, but we also started late. Ooh, I like this. Dee says she can get um, Asian goods at her Mexican market. And a lot of times the markets will have bigger international sections and you, you can often tell, like we live in a very tech centric place. So like near Cary in Morrisville, there are tons of Indian markets and Indian restaurants, like tons to choose from. And so that makes it very exciting. But even if you just have one, the nicer you are. I find being a little middle-aged white lady, if I stand and stare long enough at something, because I love to see all the spices and think, someone will come by and tell me a really amazing recipe. So I've, I've just found a lot of learning a lot of seeing different parts of my community. I just think it's really important for us to go beyond the Kroger down the street or the Wegmans down the street. They're wonderful and we should support those too, but don't forget there's all kinds of places. <laughs> I know having an H Mart is great and we didn't have one until a couple of years ago. And Silverman said I was gonna buy peppers to hydrate them, put them in a blender. Uh, yeah, and that's good too. I just, I have a little Ninja blender and then I have, I got an attachment. So this is a spice grinder attachment. And so it's just a little bit stronger motor than your normal coffee grinder. But you can get a coffee grinder at a thrift store, run white rice through it to get the scents out, and then use it as your spice grinder. Let's see, I missed something else. I remember I wanted to say, because uh, Raven said, Raven, you're so cute. And hopefully you got my email. I never heard back from you, I don't think. So email me back. I hope everything's going really well. Um, having a partner to clean up while you cook is sexy as all get out. I know Cheryl is wonderful. And she knows I've kind of had a hard couple of weeks. <laughs> But you know, it's all good because I'm glad all of you guys got to come here. I'm at least living the class up for the next day or so. But if you know you want to come back and watch it, if you know you want to just be part of Kathy's Cooking Club, this is a little mis more disjointed than some because some classes I do experiment. Like I never made this before. It's based on a recipe I have made, but a lot of times I'll say, okay, we're making dressings. What dressing should we make up? Let's figure it out here. So Kathy's Cooking Club is a lot about not only getting some recipes, but being able to ask questions live, watching the replays, and having a really good cooking community. And when you join Kathy's Cooking Club too, if you want a class, I do my best to make that class. I did a Korean class, which was hard, because I haven't had a lot of Korean food, but I did a lot of research. We went to a couple of Korean restaurants. I, you know, did my due diligence to try and present the best that I could. But most of the time, I'm just cooking kind of normal whole food, plant-based, no oil food with gluten-free, nut-free, soy-free options. And I think we've got all that done today. And I am losing my voice. I keep Terry saying, do I need a break? You're so sweet. And I appreciate you thinking of me. This has been happening after every live. I think it's just, um, I've been talking too much and I took you guys on a walk for like an hour and talked then too. This is more talking than I'm used to doing. I'm usually very quiet. And I sit in my little world with a computer and type out my answers. Um, the brand of nutritional yeast that I'm using right now is, I'm gonna forget its name. 
starts with an F. It's the, the one that does frontier, frontier herbs. And so I do that because I just buy a pound. I'm going to do a new chaff. I have a bunch of different flavors. Chef AJ has a favorite. Nucci-licious seems to be like in the game. Um, Dylan from Well Your World has one. So I want to try all the different ones and maybe have a couple people over and see if I have a favorite. Chef AJ tastes different if they have vitamins or not. And so far, I haven't specifically noticed. I haven't had a brand I didn't like. All right. Yeah, and using your Vitamix for everything is perfect. I mean, part of the thing is that the kitchen is my job, right? So I have some things that you guys don't. That's also why I try, I don't try everything, because now some of you guys have been asking me to try some weird, th weird things that I'm not gonna do. Um, like s automatic sprouters, that's, that, that just doesn't seem to be a good, I don't, I don't feel drawn to them. That's the best way to put it. But like with the Ninja Creamy, there's always some toy I'm trying. And then I'm going to tell you, we're also going to be talking about all these little travel cooking things that we have gotten to experiment with. But, you know, again, use what's best for you and what works the best. And also, do you know what else? This would make, this would make a really good corn pasta salad sauce or even a warm Mexi mat kind of sauce. I had a Try Best Blender and I don't remember what happened to it, but I don't think it broke. I think I just had, what happens with me is I'll get too many of something and I give the ones I use the least away. The Ninja Smoothie Blender that I got, I just got a couple of years ago and then I got the spice grinder attachment. They stopped making it and then they started making the spice grinder attachment. But I just love it because that way, if everything isn't perfectly dry and crispy, I can still get that, those powders that I want. Oh gosh, I've, it, I've been live for three hours. So um, if you, I have no idea. I think I made, I made bibimbap, chopjing. I made some, uh, oh, I'm gonna forget the name of it. It's the, it's, the Korean seaweed rolls that look like sushi but aren't, and something else. Um, but each class that I've done has four to six recipes, usually. So the, out of those hundred classes, you have plenty to keep you busy. <laughs> You're, oh, I like that. Thanks, Terry. I'm staying in my lane. I'm going to use that. Why aren't you doing this? Terry told me to stay in my lane. Are you okay with taking the brunt of that? Um, oh, and, and Summer Rain News Frontier. Some people don't like the added vitamins and feel like they add a flavor. And so I want to really focus and do this tasting and find out. Kimbap, thank you. It is because my brain is dying, my voice is dying. I'm so glad that you guys came and hung out with me and got to hang out with all of us here at Kathy's Cooking Club for the night for this special one-time only extravaganza. Have a great night, you guys. As I always say, do something kind for yourself. For me, that's gonna be getting some water and <laughs> sitting down for a few minutes. And I thank you all very much. Kathy's Cooking Mem, current mem, what would you do? Current Kathy's Cooking Club members and beyond. So thank you guys for hanging out and enjoying with me. Have an amazing rest of your night, and I will probably talk to you guys real soon.